Oh my god, I was unmuted for the entire time. Wait, did I say anything? Seven month view. Did I talk? I don't think so. I think I was quiet. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Not So Chaotic. And also thank you, Munaras, for the, for the subs. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Hello. Hi, chat. How are you all doing? How's everyone doing? I... I'm not doing well today. I'm going to be honest with you. Today has been a really stressful day to me. Ten months, Thank you, Dana. Love. I appreciate it. It's been a really stressful day for me. Um, I came back from therapy, like, bawling my eyes out. Because um, I had some really tough things to discuss today. And that's okay. You know, you, you sometimes sometimes you don't have good days. Um, but I figured I'll just I'll just hang out with you guys. Because you guys always make my day better. <laughs> Thank you, Gracie, for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, um, but I didn't wanna. I didn't wanna do anything like, like big and and like and like energetic. Cause I, cause I just, I just can't bring myself to do it today. Face. Um, Thank you, Izzy. Uh, so I have a few videos that I have saved in my watch later, where I'm always like, oh, I could watch this, but I would like to watch it with chat. Cause it looks interesting. Hi, Nikki. Less than three. Um, I hope your day gets better. <laughs> Love you. I appreciate it. Um, so that's what I thought we could do today. I thought we could just watch some videos, become a true Twitch streamer, a true because that's what they do, right? They react to this stuff. So I figured let's react to stuff today. Um, oh, you like my hair? Thanks, chat. I've been using the air wrap, the Dyson air wrap. Um, Thank you, um, Kirby, uh, for the sub. I appreciate it. Is my camera glitching out? I'm not sure. Thank you, Tanya. Less than three. For the sub. If it is, then let me know. <clears throat> no? Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Just let me know if it is. I'm glad you like my hair, chat. Um, yeah, my hair Hi, doesn't Nikki. hold curls I hope really your day well. gets better. Also have you, fun Brower. and stay safe at VidCon this week. Yes, I'm traveling tomorrow, actually. Um, tomorrow morning. Uh, but yeah, my hair doesn't hold curls Hi, really Nikki. well. So I have a lot of hairspray on right now. <laughs> Thank you, Laura, for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you guys like it. I've been using purple shampoo more. I, I try to... So I, tr I, I don't know how stuff like that works, right? So today I try to like leave my purple shampoo in for longer. So I actually like left it in for 20 minutes before I washed it out. It didn't change anything. It didn't change anything. The green is still there. Well, it's it's less actually. It's not as much anymore. You can see it down here still. It's still quite green. I want it to Hello, be Nikki. I want to be silver. Very very sorry you're That's having fine. a stressful Thank day you. and it's I fine. definitely feel you. Aww. You always make make me feel better when I'm stressed, and I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you. Have the best stream. Sending hugs. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm here for. Uh, but yeah, let me actually look at some videos we could watch chat. Let me actually, I'll show you, I'll, I'll read to you what I have in my watch later. Um, and then with that we can like decide, you know. Thank you, milk tea, milk bear tea. I appreciate it. Um. Okay. Um. Let's see. Thank you, Orange, for the sub. I really like video essays. I don't know how how you guys like video essays, but I really like video essays. So I have a lot of video essays actually. Um. Hello, Nikki. Happy six months. I love your hair, and I you, hope Katie. your day becomes more relaxed. I appreciate it. You like video essays? Okay, so I have this one, which I think is really interesting, which is called How Miley Cyrus Escaped Disney's Harsh Ownership. And I think that one, I, I, I want to watch that one. That one looks really interesting. Um, and then I also have Zach and Co How Zack and Cody Escaped from Disney. So both of these I wanted to watch. Um, and then I also have... I have the fitness YouTuber who went clinically insane, which I thought was a really engaging title, which I was like, hmm, that looks really interesting. I want to know how he went clinically insane. <laughs> um, 
Ooh, and then I was thinking, so you know the Met Gala controversy with Kim Kardashian wearing uh, Marilyn Monroe's dress? So I personally don't really have an opinion on it, but I've seen very like 50-50 uh, opinions on it. I've seen like, it's awful. Why would she do that? She's ruining the dress and stuff like that. And then it's like, people are like, it's just a dress that's supposed to be worn uh, like that size. So there's like two very polarizing sides to it. And this person, this person's title is don't blame Kim Kardashian for the Mar Marilyn Monroe dress disaster at the Met Gala. And then I was thinking maybe we can look at like both sides and like find out what we think about it. Because like I said, I don't really have an opinion on it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the idea um, of what we could watch. Thank you, Mr. Simply Gifted. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I think... Uh, I think I want to start with the Miley Cyrus one, mainly just because I used to love Hannah Montana. I also used to love Zach and Cody, but I used to love Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana was like the Hi, thing I watched as a so child. you're so pretty. I Thank love you, you and Hayley. you always make me smile. Um, so I want to know how Miley Cyrus escaped Disney's harsh ownership. Um, <clears throat> so Disney oh, owned no, 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 don't do that just yet. I'm not ready yet. Uh, and if you guys wanna want like anything changed or anything, just let me know. Also, also wait, my music. I'm not good at this. There we go. Also, chat. If you wanna talk about anything, I'm I'm happy to talk. Um, I have you on both my screens actually. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's let's just look at this. Let's. Uh, the the person that made this is Patrick CC. Um, by the way, in case you are wondering, wait, can I like, can I like somehow show the channel while watching the video? Not really. Okay, it's fine. Disney owned Miley Cyrus, literally. They owned her name. From 2006 to 2011, we all witnessed what could be considered the greatest you, Disney Channel Sounds show of so all cool. time. Oh Most gosh. of us look back on the video show as Video essays are literally some of my favorite types of content. Yes! Let's go. Also, Hannah Montana and Zach and Cody were literally my entire childhood less than three. I know, right? Oh, subtitles? Yes. Um, I think they're automatic, yeah, so they might not be perfect, but I'll start from the beginning again, because he, he talks quite fast. He talks quite fast. Thank you, idiot mushroom. No, Orange, thank you for gifting us up. Okay. Disney owned Miley Cyrus, literally. They owned her name. From 2006 to 2011, we all witnessed what could be considered the greatest Disney Channel show of all time. Most of us look back on the show as nostalgic, Thank you, fun, Riley. and overall positive. However, Miley does not have the same feelings. She was the lowest paid cast member. She was working 12 hours. That's shifts crazy. The fact that she was the lowest paid cast member on her own show where she was oh, the hey, main character. That's crazy. Thank you, Ninja. Oh my god. You want it full screen? We can do it full screen. Uh that's in wow. Hello, I hope you're No, actually I wanna show three. it off. I don't wanna do it full screen because I wanna show the title and stuff. Uh because this is not you know. That's wow. An identity crisis all throughout her teenage years. We've seen oh a number God. of child stars spiral out of control, and it seems like Miley was heading that way in the early 2010s. Or maybe her wild phase. Oh was all God, planned. yeah. Do you Disney remember when everyone was clowning that? And control over the young that was girl. awful. Instead of rolling over Thank and you, dying, Bunty. Miley decided she was going to fight subs. the conglomeration. She I was going to take back it. what was rightfully hers and make Thank Disney you. want nothing to do with her. Stay hydrated. Miley's birth True. name was actually Destiny Hope Cyrus. Her parents would call her Smiley growing up, which That's ultimately really got cute. shortened to Miley. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, her father toured the world singing his country music anthems. In 2001, he landed his own TV drama and family show called Doc. Miley was nine at the time one. and realized her new passion was acting. She made her acting debut as Kylie on Doc and was instantly hooked. She had another small role as Ruthie in the film Big Fish, but when the opportunity for Hannah Montana presented itself, Miley was fixated on landing that role. Hannah Montana was a new Disney Channel show about a teenage girl who lived a double life as a famous pop star. Michael Poirier. Oh, which ones of you guys have watched Hannah Montana growing up, by the way? Who has watched Hannah Montana? I believe most most people, right? Yeah. Of 
Yeah, okay, okay. I'm glad. There's the story. I don't know. I love I like telling the story. So I have a story about Hannah Montana. What, because the last so the last season of Hannah Montana they had how long did Hannah Montana run run? How long did Hannah Mon I cannot type Montana air. How many seasons did it have? Um four seasons. Okay. The last season was called Hannah Montana Forever, right? And me as a young German child that had just learned a few English words thought that Hannah Mo that the word forever meant forever. So when they announced the canceling of the show, I was so angry. I had my Hannah Mo so I had a Hannah Montana poster in my room on my dresser i ripped it off because i was so angry i was like how could they do this i thought it was forever i thought they meant it's gonna be forever i was so angry i was so angry um so yeah that's 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 my experience for Hannah Montana. He had the show idea <laughs> yeah i was scammed i was literally They'd scammed 1000 kids audition for the roles Thank and you, still Isad. could not decide who was right for it Three miley's first audition was when she was 11 years old in 2002. she auditioned for the she role so of the best cute. friend but then was encouraged to go for the lees and she was a very talented singer so she sent Aww. in another audition and another ultimately the show producers knew that they had to see her in person if they wanted to make a decision she flew in and killed it her raspy voice confidence and true southern twang was exactly what Disney needed. Aww. Miley didn't just embody the character they wrote, she was her. Miley was a small town girl from Tennessee who went to school and had a big family. Her dad was a famous musician and she was a very talented singer. She had always dreamed of being like her dad to some degree, but always loved her that friends so and life cute. in the country. She fit the, the role so well that the even casted her father survive. Billy to play as her dad it. on the show. Hope as they had a, a father-daughter bond so I real it could not too. be recreated. <laughs> they actually changed the lead character's name from Chloe Stewart to Miley Stewart because they couldn't separate the character from oh the real God. person. That is the show so aired cool. in March 2016. That is so cool that they oh, actually yeah. like were like, no, you are the per perfect person. We're going to name it after you. That is actually really sweet. To 5.4 million viewers, the highest TV show premiere in Disney history the at forever this point. Story then again? they would average about 3.5 million. Viewers <laughs> I do like per to tell the Forever Story. Nick. It was the most popular kids show on TV. She immediately became a megastar, both literally and on the show. Miley was living her biggest dreams. She was on Disney. Her parents were happy, and everything was sunshine and rainbows. However, there was a lot and of Phoenix new pressure. The Miley months. went from being an aspiring actress to 12-hour workdays, recording studios. That's crazy, though. Are are children allowed to work? Ch Sorry, by the way, do you want me to pause them or do you want Hi, to talk Nikki. over it? I have been having a lot of um, depression lately, so well, I'm excited you're you streaming soon. less than three. Because uh, I know some people get annoyed if I pause it all the time, but obviously I want to put it, put my intel. Okay, pause. Okay, I'm glad. Um, are children allowed to work 12 hours, like 12 hour days? Usually not, right? Because I know with Millie Bobby Brown, um, actually, that's really fun. Um, where did I see that? I think i saw it in a youtube short wait let me try and pull that up no i'll, I'll put it up later uh millie bobby brown uh in stranger things in the last season um had her head shaved again but they didn't shave it they actually put on a wig but because Thanks she was ch still a child actor when they i hope your day gets better thank you I and hannah montana it. was my childhood less than three Hell yeah. happy to hang out with you smiley Yay. face uh when they um were filming it sorry she she wasn't allowed to work as long so they had to put the wig on in like half an hour they got it down to half an hour um so i'm really confused that miley worked depends on the country country i mean it's america so i'm really thank you bunny uh so i'm really confused that she worked 12 hour days and doing her schooling as on a set. Child Miley actors. probably had a hard time and trying to balance her work and acting. If she had Grammarly, her workflow would have been way more efficient. <laughs> Grammarly Add. is an all-in-one writing tool that improves productivity Get that back, and saves King. time when Get you have that multiple bag. assignments to complete. It is free to Thank download you, and it works for new work, such as Google Docs to help you save time and work more efficiently. But <laughs> upgrading the video Grammarly Premium Millie? will yeah, save you even more time really, with their advanced really cool. features that suggest different words to use, point out unclear sentences, and fix up your writing to make it more compelling. Succeed on your finals by using- Do you guys want to see it? I'm going to try and pull it up. I'm gonna pull up the video of Millie, um, Millie's wig. 
Billy Bobby Brown wig. Um, here. This one. No, that's not. That's not. That's not it. That's you had a stressful day. But that is that is how they got the wig down. But I actually wanted this. Where they explain the here. Style and keep up the great Let's work. talk about how Millie Bobby. Three. Thank you, I appreciate it. Brown had such a realistic crop haircut for season four of Stranger Things. Look at that. And look at some. Because it looks really realistic. I figured. I thought she shaped it again. Skull. She's been with the series since season one, and she told me how she created the most realistic looking wig I have frankly ever seen in television you, watching yeah. the show i paused and i googled did millie shave her head again because it just looks so like real me. and i wasn't the only one it was one of the top google searches on may 27th when the show premiered sarah told me that she studied eleven's hairline from season one and she did various iterations of this particular wig millie had three wigs this is one iteration you can see that it's a little spikier not as cropped close to the head so cute isn't it there were several wigs for millie herself <laughs> Her photo I saw the same video this double. morning. Yeah, I think I saw it this morning. Thank you, Will. I appreciate it. Sarah has a video up on her Instagram right now. Thank you. Was still a child actor when filming, so there. This process took 30 minutes each day. See, she was still a child actor during this process, so they got it down to 30 minutes. I just wanted to say thank you for being so kind when I saw you a few days ago. And Grammarly's free synonym feature to replace overused words, which is very helpful. Oh, do we get a raid? Hello, raiders. Welcome. Plagiarism Welcome to the stream. I've had a good stream. We're just watching some videos right now. We're watching how Miley Cyrus escaped Disney's harsh ownership by Patrick CC. Get the right uh, he's doing an ad right now, and I don't want to skip the ads because I'm already to reacting to his content, I so I can at least give him his Grammarly ad. You know, make sure every sentence is perfect so you don't get bored and click off the video. Grammarly's features not only make me sound more professional. But they save me at least three to four hours of work time. With midterms and assignments piling up, succeed in school with tools like Grammarly. It's free. Why not? Go to Grammarly.com slash PatrickCC to sign up for your free account. And if you'd like to get extra features, I might need Grammarly, Grammarly for my tweets for off with how many typos I make all the time. She was living a double life on the show and in real life. You can imagine how hard this would be to process as a 13 year old. When she would God, put on she the was Hannah Montana 13 wig, and she had to work 12 hour shift. Fans would scream to her when they see her in real life. Like, That's what? Crazy. I'm Hannah. Wait, no, I'm Miley. But they don't care about me as much. But when I throw on the wig, they love me. That's crazy. Miley's mother, Tish, who was her manager, didn't realize oh how quickly god. a mega they are so like cute together. <gasps> look! Oh my god! They they look so similar. I love that. I didn't know that was her mother. Thank you, Ivy. They didn't even negotiate her salary, which is rumored to be about 15000 per episode. Apparently, this was lower than some of her co-stars. They kind of just... I mean, I feel like fifteen thousand. I've also been really stressed recently, so thank you for this. Aww, you also Arcus. look really pretty. Thank you, I appreciate it. I feel like I think fifteen thousand actually is. Cause how much does the Riverdale cast get? No, well, I think Hannah Montana was bigger than Riverdale, but during the time, the rates probably were lower. But the fact that it is lower than some of her co-stars, I don't understand. I understand fifteen k for an episode because that's like. For a show, I think pretty average, at least for back then. But I don't understand that it's lower at all. Just went with the motions. Billy Ray had a resurgence in fame. He was doing shows and selling albums. Miley was getting her little paycheck, so everything seemed to be good. And I think, but obviously, and I think they were getting way less than what for they were it being the beginning, to, like if she got 15K at the start, I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. Me in that way. But in the 2016 for how with Hell, big Hannah Montana got, I don't understand it. Miley said, I didn't know any better. My name was Miley on the show, but I didn't own my name. We didn't think about that. January of 2008, Aww. Destiny Hope Cyrus legally changed her name to Miley Ray Cyrus. When it was reported, she just said Miley was the name she identified with since a very young age. Plus, being known as Miley to the world because of her show, it only made sense. While those things are definitely true, the little hint, we didn't think about that, made me want to go deeper and speculate further. I think there might be a deeper and maybe more complicated reason why Miley changed her name. Three months a. Nobody knew Hannah Montana mm -hmm. would be an overnight months, sensation, months, really but they were aware of the potential it had. I'm talking commercial potential. Money, baby. And remember, they spent years going through thousands of auditions to get the right person, just in case it took off. In my Disney pop star factory video, I highlighted the machine that Disney built Ooh, with that's Lizzie an McGuire, that looks an Cheetah Girls, like an interesting Hannah Montana, video and others. Too. They had a very calculated and too. efficient approach to hiring talent, casting them for a show, and releasing soundtracks and original music under their label Hollywood Records. 
making mm. millions in the TV game. And I the didn't industry. know. Lizzie that's a really funny kind of fact. Like I didn't know Hollywood Records was the label that um, released all the shows. I thought it, it all, all the music. I thought it was just like like various artists, you know. Um, and I always listened to the soundtracks when I was a child because that was what I grew up with and that was what I liked. Um, so when I found that out, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. All runs. They were successful, but nothing like Hannah Montana would become. The show premiered to millions of viewers every week. <laughs> the very first Hannah Montana album released in 2006 and would go three times platinum. And I don't believe Miley received any payment for this album. And if so, very minor. The certification That's is crazy. I love she went so three much times platinum and didn't like receive much or any money for it. Oh my god. It says various artists. It oh, was there also it released is. under Walt Disney yeah. Records, which is basically their label for soundtracks, That's compilations, crazy. and remix albums. Whereas Hollywood Records is their label for real albums, not just TV or movie related albums. On top of that, merch was definitely flying off the shelves. T shirts, dolls, phones, pencils, purses, posters. Posters. Keychains. They were selling everything. Most of that was posters. Hannah stuff, which I had one of those. That Disney did rightfully own and create, so it would make sense if Miley wasn't being paid royalties. However, in 2007, during season two, things got a little interesting june 2007 oh okay so that was all season released, one but it also had a second disc called meet miley cyrus this album went number one on the billboard hot 200 and will go on to sell three million copies which was accompanied with a 70 show tour almost three and a half months straight of shows all of these were 10 to 15 thousand person stadiums selling out within minutes the tour grossed 70 million dollars she would crazy. perform half as hannah montana and half as miley while she was definitely getting a performance fee which i would say was anywhere from 10 to 30 thousand per show which would end up being around 1 to 1.5 million for the tour sounds like great money but her name is on the tour for 70 million she got around what the, like two million she most definitely could have owned a percentage of the whole thing with the right negotiations yeah making for at least sure 10 to 20 million but she did not oh own my her name God. people called her miley cyrus but technically that was a stage that. name january 2008 was the end of the best of both worlds tour and aside from the hannah montana i remember movie, that this tour was actually i always wanted to go she would i ever didn't perform as the hannah montana character the beginning of 2008 was when destiny hope was legally changed to miley cyrus my guess is that these smart people that tish hired were advising her to legally change her name as a contractual loophole now you can't just get out of a contract by changing your name if that was the case everyone who had a mortgage in america would be changing their names and poof no more house debt However, oh my God, Miley has imagine. been working like a dog at this point for almost two years, selling out stadiums all over the world. Truthfully, this should be enough money to set her up for life, but I don't think they had it. So changing her name might allow her to sign months. new contracts you, and Nathan. renegotiate we better terms. You, for example, in 1993, Prince legally changed his name from Prince, which was his birth name, to an unpronounceable symbol. Oh Why? yeah, I remember Warner Bros. that. Warner Bros. took the name, trademarked it, and used it as the main marketing tool to promote all of the music I wrote. Doesn't that kind of sound like what Disney was doing with the name Miley Cyrus? Now I'm summarizing this a lot, but basically everything that Prince records and creates is technically owned by Warner Brothers while under the contract. So by changing his name to the symbol, he can record new material all in his home by himself, and Warner doesn't own it since it wasn't made by Prince, it was made by the symbol. So maybe Destiny hopes- Which is really smart because obviously people are still gonna call him Prince or formerly formerly known as prince so they still associate it because no one can pronounce that symbol um which is really smart but i guess they just did the opposite with miley signed some sort of contract with walt disney records while recording and releasing the hannah montana albums but when she legally changed her name to miley cyrus maybe that allowed her to sign a new contract with oh, hollywood records and mind. release her new album breakout under the stage name miley cyrus but it wasn't just all business miley started resenting the character a lot really hannah montana was not a character that wasn't what the show is about it was about a normal girl with a wig on everything was always in me the concept of the show it's me 
Hannah was just Miley with a wig on. Take off the wig and you have the exact same person. Her identity Aww. as an artist and a person was being thwarted by a fucking wig. Thank you, Tommy. She wanted to break away from <laughs> Hannah Montana. Hi. Breakout, released July of 2008, was successful. It went platinum in just a few months. I just before the album, she got into some controversy for this topless. I do remember that. Affair. Miley and her family felt like it was just artistic, but she was pressured Nikki, to apologize for the provocative also photo. Month. Also around have this time, photos night, leaked of her and her boyfriend at the time love. kissing and cuddling. Thank you. Yeah, I remember that controversy. Um, I wasn't on Twitter in 2008. Where where was that? I definitely remember people. Maybe I heard it afterwards, but people were mad for some reason. Disney was not happy. All of their stars kept a squeaky clean image, so Miley was towing the line. Magazines? Oh, maybe. I did, I did read a lot of magazines about Miley Cyrus. Montana and working on new music. In 2009, she released Party in the USA, which would eventually go on to sell 10 million I couldn't records. imagine being this famous so young. I know, I feel for every child actor, especially actresses. Because if we look at, if we look at any child actress, as soon as she's Hello, 18, Nikki. or any better. artist, musician, like any female in the public that got big when she was a child, as soon as they turn 18, it's creeps and just eyes on them it's not fun it's really horrible um so yeah i feel for for all of them and then obviously being so young and having so many eyes on you so many opinions on you and just like i i i got that when i was 18 right i was still really young but i cannot imagine being a child being like a literal clean, child and having to deal with all of this shit tenfolds maybe hundredfolds like they had to it's crazy biggest song of all time <laughs> she performed the single at the teen choice like emma Awards, watson yeah or even uh recently dance, which was uh, pretty thingy. mild still Billy bobby brown Disney was getting Billie eilish fed up with her. all of them now the 16 turning 17 year old was about to embark on the wonder world tour where she didn't perform as hannah montana at all the tour was 56 shows long the smallest venue was 10,000 people. The biggest was wow. 20,000 people. The O2 Arena in London, which she sold out five nights in one month. That's which so kind of made crazy. me take a step back and realize just how massive she was at age 16 and 17. She sold. She was 16 and 17 and selling out the O2 five times. <laughs> Thank you, uh oh. That's insane sold over 800,000 I mean, tickets on this tour. Yeah, even my little German ass so it's pretty safe who to say that didn't Miley speak Cyrus English stand on her own new Hannah Montana. Montana. I'm also assuming that she made way more money on the Miley tour due to the legal name change. Think about it. She did 70 shows on the Hannah Montana Best of Both Worlds tour. That grossed 70 million. And she did another 56 shows as Miley after filming a whole new season of the show. That's an insane amount of work and pressure for a teenager. Maybe the Miley tour they had some ownership in and stood to make a lot more money. Maybe they were trying to gain leverage and show how Miley didn't need to be Hannah Montana anymore. Because as much as we don't want to accept it, she didn't want to be this character anymore. Mm. Maybe her parents just said, hey, let's just do this one tour and we could be done for a while. The 2010 release of Hannah Montana season four got pushed back. They said she was busy touring, but we all know she was full blown fed up with this character she had been playing since she was 12. In the middle of 2010, she released her album Can't Be Tamed with Hollywood Records, which the album name alone speaks for itself. The music video for the single stirred up controversy again as she was underage acting scandalous, which is mild by today's standards. <laughs> At this point, she is publicly admitting she is done with the character and wants to move on, even mm -hmm. though Hannah Montana season four is still not even released yet so that's not you oh know, shit over for my fans but i'm kind of moving on yeah. new things but can't be tamed was a commercial failure compared to everything she had done before the record still isn't gold i remember like half of these things cool. i don't remember she didn't even do one. a north american tour for this album my guess is at this point oh, hollywood records may have told tour. her see you do need hannah montana Maybe her going out publicly saying that she was ready to move on was making her fans resent her, but she wasn't able to get new fans because they still looked at I her. I didn't resent Disney Hannah Montana. Girl. I resented Disney. She, I knew my, my, how old was I? Like 10? No, I was younger. Like eight? Whatever it was. My preteen self. I knew it wasn't Hannah. It wasn't Miley's fault. It wasn't Hannah Montana's fault. It was Disney. They robbed us. <laughs> 
she was stuck in the middle. A couple weeks after she turned 18, a video of her leaked while smoking salvia out of a bong. Disney was livid about this. Miley smoked weed as a teenager, even during her time on the show. But oh she God. obviously hid this. She even had a massive clothing brand deal with Walmart in the works. Once the news came out about the bong, they cut all ties with her. Her live performance were starting to become but they did have, provocative, like, which again by today's standards are actually clothes. very mild. She started admitting the realities of being a child star. You know, there's times that you hear what you should be so much that you lose like what you actually are. Miley had been media trained to answer questions in a specific way, to think a certain way so she could be more marketable and relatable. Every time she had a thought, she thought about Disney and how they would feel about her response. Do you ever swear? No. <laughs> you stub your toe, what do you say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Disney owned her oh. mind, her thoughts for years. 2011 was the first year she didn't work at Disney. It was her first real break, but with reruns and the show being so massive, it never really escapes you. Everywhere she goes, that's what people want to talk about. That's still what she is known for. That's she cuts her hair. A simple haircut and people all jump the gun. She's going crazy. She's just like every other child star. She broke up with her fiance, Liam Hemsworth. She dropped the We Can't Stop music video where she was twerking and being risque. The media was in a frenzy. Then the 2013 VMAs performance. Miley wanted to make history and that's exactly what she did. Going into oh, yeah. it, most people thought, oh, Miley Cyrus, the Disney girl. When she came out, they were shocked. The twerking on Robin Thicke would be the viral moment that caused most of the outrage. This is so embarrassing. I think it was the Wrecking they know Ball Miley was music calculated video. on this the whole time. She wasn't going crazy. She wasn't trying to put on an artistic display of emotion. She was trying to fuck shit up and get everyone in the world talking about her music. And that's exactly what happened. Every yeah, single celebrity true. chimed in, calling her a stripper, hooker, trashy. So she went the artistic route and dropped the Wrecking Ball music there video. There it is. And of yeah. course, people didn't look at that as artistic. They thought, wow, she is really doing whatever she can for attention. Then again at the EMAs where she lit a joint on stage, oh collaborating God. with Juicy J and Mike Will Made It and a ton of other rappers. No matter what she did, people pinpointed her as the Disney star gone trashy and try hard. But if you watch any interview or listen to her talk at this point, it was all highly calculated, self-aware, and conscious. I'm changing and learning so much. I think especially Honestly, now good for her. I feel like I found more of my independence. I don't think I was ever really happy with who I was. Sure, she liked to party and go wild, but understood the media game was just try to keep them talking while she keeps collecting the money. Because her album mm -hmm. went three times platinum. We Can't Stop five times platinum. Wow. Wrecking Ball video has 1.5 billion views Alien. and went seven times platinum. And here we are talking about all of this almost 10 years later. Her parents didn't want her to go wild. Disney didn't want her to go wild. And because of it, Disney did everything they could to disassociate with her. Did she do it for business reasons? Or did she do it to escape the child star stigma? Because her wild phase calmed down immensely after 2013. She went back to normal pretty quickly, making country songs and pop songs that didn't rely on her being naked to sell. And if she didn't have her wild phase, we would still be thinking of her as the girl who couldn't survive without the help of the Disney conglomeration. Wow. It's far too- I mean, oh, there it is. Oh, I honestly good for her. She had to do what she had to do. And I like, I feel like, of course, people talked and they were like, oh, she's going trashy. Oh, she's she's stripping in front of the camera. How could she do that? Especially back in the t in the day, it was like, oh, my God, this woman is naked. Someone restrain her and put her in a psych ward. She's showing her boobs. Oh, my God. As yeah. And like in like. I feel like especially like American culture because in Germany, I feel like we don't care about showing skin and stuff. But in America, you're not even allowed to show your shoulders in school as a woman. So like I, I, I think she like I didn't I think she did the right thing. And obviously now, 10 years later, no one gives a shit. Everyone's like, yeah, good for her. Good for her. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Haley. <clears throat> you were mostly sad for her. I mean, I'm sad that she had to do it to get out of like being treated as like the disney star and like you know the little little good girl um and i'm sad that she had to do it for that but i'm proud of her especially for sticking with it i feel like I feel like if I had to do that, I'd do it like once and then I'd be like, "Okay, guys, I'm done now. I cannot do this." <laughs> So yeah, I'm 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 glad she's I'm glad she can be herself now and just be 
Miley Cyrus and not Hannah Montana. <clears throat> Anyways, how did Zack and Cody escape from Disney? Let's see. It's it's also by Patrick. Uh, let's common let's that child see. Child stars struggle adapting to a more normal life okay, wait, after I'm television. Start again. It's far too common that child stars struggle adapting to a more normal life after television fame, mostly because of the pressure enforced on them at such a young age. Plus, all their flaws, successes, and failures are publicized to millions of people. Dylan Sprouse and Cole Sprouse are two identical twins that had rise to millions of. People. It looks like Miley, but it's not. People. Actually, Dylan Sprouse know. and Cole Sprouse are two identical twins that had wildly successful careers that started when they were just eight months old. I hope, we know that I hope this talks all... about Cole's Tumblr project. Oh my god! Do you guys know about... Okay, who here knows about Cole's Tumblr project? I think it's really interesting. We can actually, if they don't mention it, I want to, tell, I, I want to watch a video about it. Because I don't know too much about it. i watched i watched a video about it and I, and I know what it is and i think what it was is he started a tumblr where he like posted his stuff and everything and then oh, no we're gonna we're gonna watch something i don't want to say something wrong i know it was weird i know it was really weird um so yeah um we'll definitely do that and also I, I i mentioned this the other day have you guys seen his butt? Every time I think of Cole now, I, I think of his butt. Because he posted a picture of his butt on Instagram the other day. Greeting his PR team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi, Tamina. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Develop emotional trauma <laughs> and have a hard time getting away from the label of child star. Even at a young age, the twins realized this and started their master plan to capitalize on the rewards of being a Disney star, only to escape and leave their past behind them. Forever. Oh, okay. Make sure you're hydrated while watching this video. Dylan and Cole Sprouse are the 30-year-old twins, mostly known for They're their two. They're 30 now. Oh my God, I feel so old now. They're 30. Disney TV wow. shows, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and the sequel, Sweet Life on Deck. But before they did that, wow. they had some other pretty major accomplishments. They starred as Julian in Big Daddy. They played Ross's son on Friends, voice oh, acting shit. in Eight Crazy Nights, as well as a I ton of different that. TV roles and direct-to-video films. Not only were the two adorable and talented actors, but being identical twins gave them an advantage. <laughs> it allowed Hollywood producers to cast them as the same person. Child labor laws prevent actors under 18 from being overworked. When Cole was done shooting a scene, Dylan would step in to do the other and they oh, would trade nice. off and producers really were able nice. to get double the work out of essentially one kid 2005 the sweet life of zach and cody danny callis who ended up writing the show always dreamed of doing his version of eloise at the plaza which was a family film about a sweet but mischievous <laughs> six-year-old who lives in the plaza hotel in new york city he actually wrote the idea of the show two times and tried to sell it to different networks when he approached the disney channel they actually said to him life Here's two twins. What can i you like both of it that? i don't think i so i think the su sweet life so the first one the hotel one i think is just for me i like it i like it more because i grew up with it because that was what i watched that was like the first like show i would watch religiously um and also i don't remember which one of them i was really young but one of them was my like was a crush of mine i don't remember which one of though of them though um but yeah i really liked that one and then then the one on deck the one on the ship I watched a lot, but not as much anymore. But it was really funny. I think it was funnier. <clears throat> the idea for The Sweet Life for the third time, and it got picked up. The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody was about two twin boys who live at the five-star Tipton Hotel because their mother was an employed singer who performed in the lounge multiple times per week. While she was working or sleeping, the boys would find themselves getting into all kinds of predicaments that they had to work together to get out of. Zack, played by Dylan, was the cool, outgoing, and self-centered brother, while Cody, played by Cole, was the more mature, nerdy, and gentle twin. Exactly the same as Drake and Josh. But what's funny is, mm. Dylan and Cole ended up being very similar to their roles on the show in real life. The boys had amazing chemistry oh, together because they were one, actually brothers, and two, had been working since before they had conscious thoughts. The show also followed the hotel owner's daughter, Oh my Hilton, god, we have a Brenda poll. Song, who Dylan was a parody poll. character of Paris Hilton. She was scatterbrained, This is like, this rich. is like the Twilight poll. Guys, are you team Edward or team Jacob? I've never, I've never really watched Twilight, so I don't, I don't have an opinion, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. I can't choose. Oh no. <laughs> 
and solely focused on boys and fashion. As well as the candy counter employee, Maddie, who was hardworking and intelligent. One I thing I gotta give Maddie. the show mild props for is that they reversed the nerdy, smart Asian and dumb blonde stereotypes. Mr. Mosby was the nervous hotel ah, manager Mr. who would Mosby. often try to ruin Zach and Cody's fun. He was like a father figure to them as well. When The Sweet Life aired in 2005, it was the most successful premiere in Disney Channel history. It was nominated for three Emmys and is Team wildly Jacob. Loved by Everyone's fans. Team These Jacob. Oh my god, three. everyone is Team Jacob. Wow. <laughs> Team Bella shouldn't have dated either of them. True. From what I heard, it was really toxic. It was a really toxic relationship from what I heard. Team Alice? Oh my god, yes. Alice is the best. I love Alice. So I watched the first and the second one, I think, uh, or like, I think last year with Bear. Um, and I, oh, I fell in love with Alice instantly. I fell in love with her. The first time I saw her, I was like, I like you. So yeah. In life, kids like myself around the world wanted so bad. Plus, if you watch interviews from around this time, they were infectious. They were so lovable. Now, are y'all both, do you have girlfriends? Um, no, we are single men. <laughs> we are single men? <laughs> why did that sound, why did that sound like someone, to something Tommy would have said on that, in that age? No, I'm a single man. I'm a man. <laughs> Disney knew they needed to keep them around longer, so they came up with a sequel in 2008, The Sweet Life on Deck. Before they started a new show, they had a gap year. So Dylan and Cole <laughs> actually got jobs at a comic book store called Meltdown in LA. Most oh, of what cute. they did was packaging, putting the comic books in the little sleeves. But their father always taught them that they can't get wrapped up in celebrity status. The 16 year olds were kids just like everybody else, and That's that they nice. needed some balance in their life. I'm the glad. boys picked up hobbies. Cole started his journey into photography, and Dylan got into drinking alcohol, which would be his next passion. Nice. But filming was about to start again, and it was time for them to quit the comic book store. The Sweet Life on Deck airs in 2008 to over five Five million viewers. Now they were on the SS Tipton, wow. which was a cruise ship that they lived on, which created tons of new opportunity for them to get in trouble. None of the characters developed much over time. Cody stayed the soft, innocent dork, and Zach stayed the selfish jock. But we were growing up with them. We even watched Cody have to deal with his voice cracking, and the boys looking for their first armpit hairs. They were oh like the God. little brothers we always wanted. The two shows ran from 2005 to 2011. You know what? My brother looked really from like really similar than them that like that sounds weird because i used to say they had uh, like when i was young i had a crush on them but that is because in this age he looked similar not before in this age because both of them like when they entered puberty like started to like have very similar face like face structures i feel like before that like children don't really have face structures um but yeah so when he said like, oh, they were like the brothers you 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 always wanted. I'm like, no, my brother, I, uh, yeah. M maybe that is why I didn't like the one on deck as much because I just saw my brother in it too much. And I'm like, that's weird. I don't like that. That's really weird. Episodes plus a movie. This was technically the longest running live action show if you combine them. Fans love the sequel. Some people even thought it was better than the original. I personally think the original was better, but we can fight it out in the comments. Naturally, like all shows that depend on children, they can only last so long. Dylan and Cole were now 18 and looked vastly different than when they started. But the truth is, they didn't want The Sweet Life to end as abruptly as it did. The twins wanted to produce and direct one more season of The Sweet Life. They came up with an idea where they graduate high school, move off the ship, and go back to Boston. <laughs> In their downtime at college, they would meet a single dad with a child at the hotel. Zach and Cody would kind of raise the boy up like a little brother, showing Aww. him all the crazy stuff in the hotel, leading Aww. him into wacky situations. That's kind of cute. The final season could have the been the perfect way to I transition the into a whole new show based around the young boy. Cole said that the goal of this was to transition them out of the show. That way, the cast and crew didn't have to lose their jobs that they had for the past six years. Aww, Disney that's exactly executives sweet, laughed though. in their faces for the idea they came up with, which oh led God. to a five-year hiatus in acting. Here you will see a photo of Dylan That's Sprouse great. working as a host in a New York City restaurant just two years after the Disney Channel, which led to multiple assumptions that he was broke. But when you see a picture of a guy who has made, presumably, and I'm making a presumption here, a lot of money off of a television series and that he's working in a restaurant, uh, wouldn't that be a reasonable conclusion? Well, I mean, I definitely think that that's that in scared my, me. Um, <laughs> oh my god, well, that negative. scared it's just me. Just a negative way to think, uh, for the most part. People can work jobs like that for experience, and I think that's that's 
kind of the, the way I, I targeted it. If I didn't know anything about the Sprouse twins, I would have assumed the same thing. But what you will notice in the rest of this video is that the boys, mostly Dylan, have done a lot to escape their previous lives. Mm, they both I'm accepted interested to New in York that Uni because I haven't heard as much about Dylan as I have about Cole. Because obviously Cole is on Riverdale. I watch Riverdale. I'm one of those people, guys. I watch Riverdale. But I just do it because it's funny. I don't do it because I actually like it. I just think it's I just think it's a dumpster fire and I enjoy it. Um, but that's why I heard a lot about Cole. Um, and I feel like I just feel like Dylan hasn't been around much, but I'm I'm glad he's gonna talk about that university and decided to dorm with everyone else and go to college full time. <laughs> Dylan was majoring in video game design and was something of a video game addict. Cole was an archaeology student majoring in geographical information systems. He traveled all over wow. the world through their program and even made a big discovery. Cole unearthed a mask of Denisius in Bulgaria. They both were quite literally just normal college kids from 2011 to 2014, I'm glad. focused on their studies and working side jobs in their free time. This type of normality really most definitely prevented them from ending up like countless other child celebrities. Child stars face a lot of pressure to immediately get an adult acting role or start a music career. Whatever it is, if they don't outdo Disney or Nickelodeon, it seems like a step down because they have millions of fans that want them to still be their 13 year old selves, but when you get into your 20s, you just want to move on. The pressure ends up eating them alive and they make mistakes. Then it's highly publicized, which compounds the initial problem. So instead of going down the dark Hollywood path, the twins did the exact opposite. Let's fully step away from this. We can't be compared to our old roles if we aren't doing anything at all. They did stay popular on Twitter and social media and would let the jokes fly. Oh, I get it, Selena. Too good to follow your old pals, Dylan and Cole, huh? This is just like when we were 12. Cole started an Instagram page <laughs> called hell? Camera Duels, where he would post Ooh, pictures I love of people that, that were trying to... I love I love this channel uh, this this Instagram page I've been following for years now I think it's so funny secretly take pictures of him accompanied with comically long captions of him critiquing their strategies the only scandals or controversies they got in were Thank pretty you, mild Dylan took lewd pictures of himself that leaked because of this he gained hundreds of thousands of followers so it kind of helped him then wow. Cole started a Tumblr social experiment there it is legitimately made <laughs> there it is oh my god. I hope he's talking about this one in more detail. Some of his fans turn on him, where he pretended to be himself in order to get fans to engage with him. While they were engaging, he was writing deep and philosophical paragraphs on why their perception of him is flawed. Then after one month, he deleted his account, told everyone it was a social experiment, and basically made fun of them for idolizing him and engaging. Kind of a douchey move. Like I said before, yeah. Cole and Dylan are a lot like Cody and Zach. Cole is the philosophical, poetic, artsy boy who thinks super deeply about everything. Dylan, while still being artsy and well-educated, likes to slam beers with the bros and have a good time. We get it, you're Dylan Sprouse, and you're livid about games and journalism, even though you can't fight me IRL. Catch these hands? We are as the sun. The rays come bearing to our soft-spoken souls, dancing torpidly upon the frail shudder of angst. Your Insta. Remember when I said nice. Dylan discovered his love for alcohol at age 16? Due to his love for history, he became interested in the ancient alcoholic beverage mead, which apparently is the oldest alcohol ever that can be traced back 8,000 years. Never heard about it's a fermented that. beverage made of honey, water, and yeast. During oh, his college years, he would practice making his own mead. Some batches were good, some were terrible. But no matter what, he and his roommate Matt got drunk. When Dylan graduated college, he was taking some acting gigs, but he had more free time and wanted to pick up a hobby. Since he was passionate about brewing, he got an internship at a distillery called Kings County in Brooklyn. Working there and getting immersed into this world made him realize how badly he wanted to pursue this hobby into something bigger. The all-wise meadery was born, which is his Brooklyn meadery where he actually makes the alcohol himself. Oh, shoot! Sure. That is so cool! They thought he was a privileged actor boy who grew up with everything and wanted to take over their hard-earned reputation. They didn't realize how passionate he was and how much respect he oh had for God. mead and brewing. Plus, he had a lot of people just saying he was another celebrity endorsing a product. Like, he didn't care for it. It was just for money. I have to explain a lot that I'm actually brewing it. Wow. Right? I have to explain I a like lot that. that these are my recipes. I'm so glad that he has, like, a, a passion like that. This is my business, and I'm here every day I can be. That comes as a surprise to a lot of people. It's kind of wild to see someone go for a much more humble job serving the local community rather than chasing Hollywood fame. Cole, on the other hand, was pursuing his photography career. Thank you, Not Abby. so much for money, but rather the art. W One day he asked Traveler Magazine if he could work on a piece it. for them. 
They said yes, but not for money, since they had no idea he did anything outside of the Disney Channel. So Cole took a three-day train journey from the West Coast to the East Coast and documented the process. They ended up publishing his article digitally. While this isn't some massive success story, it just shows the boys were trying to broaden their horizons with the luxury of not needing big paychecks. He would go on to be a respected photographer and get some of his pieces published in high-profile magazines. But Cole would ultimately get back into acting. In 2017, he got a consistent role on the wildly successful teen drama show Riverdale, which has been running there it for is. seven seasons. As well as lead roles in the movies. I think five they're stopping Riverdale now, though. I think it's only gonna be seven seasons, isn't it? I think so. Oh my god, chat! I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly say I feel really weird because I made that comment about my brother, and it's just been stuck in my head. I don't. I was never attracted to my brother. Okay. I just want to make that very, very clear in case it it wasn't. Because it's just been stuck in the back of my head and I'm like, was that weird? Was that a really weird thing to say? But I, no. I'm, I'm not and I was never. Please don't think I was. Because that I, I just want to make that clear. It, you, you know, okay. I just, it's just the thing of like, if the internet ever takes that out of context, I would feel really awkward and I would hate that. And I want to just say that. Okay, I'm glad. Okay, good. It's just been stuck in the back of my head and I had to like say something. Good. Okay feet apart Good. and moonshot i definitely see cole pursuing more large okay. acting gigs in his career dylan did also get back into acting in 2017 okay. his team suggested that he shoot for lead roles in big projects like his brother but he prefers small indie films and wanted to participate on good projects regardless of the character size or depth Dylan still spends a lot of his time focusing on video games. He's extremely immersed in Dungeons and & Dragons and offers his help with indie game developers. Aww, he even recently released his so own comic book called Sun Eater. My brother and I so used cool. to get quite a bit of, oh, you made it out. Oh, you're unscathed. No, the young women on the channel we were on were so heavily sexualized from such an earlier age than my brother and I that there's absolutely no way that we could compare our experiences. Cole has been vehemently against child stars getting criticized for their downward spirals because there are mostly women being targeted and oh, the public yeah. doesn't seem to <gasps> Oh, yeah, actually, he has been. He has been very outspoken about that. I have seen that. I re and I really appreciate that. I think that is really cool. Star, or what goes on behind the scenes. Dylan and Cole actually started <laughs> getting into acting because their family needed money, so they put their one-year-olds to work. This sounds like a recipe for disaster, but it seems as if their parents instilled the right values in them to maintain balance as a celebrity. Some people believe Disney exhausts and overworks children for our entertainment. Cole says that they didn't suffer as much trauma since they were boys, which could be very true. I also believe that stepping away from the spotlight and pursuing something normal was the key to them maintaining their sanity and integrity. Although they look back on their past fondly and came out unscathed, we will never get a Sweet Life of Zack and Cody reboot. I'm asked all the time if Dylan and I are gonna do a Sweet Life reboot and I go, no, absolutely not. Honestly, confidently no. <laughs> no, I don't think that we will. What's oh, what's this, this one? Sixteen. Oh yeah, Keep this one also. I think this one is also for great. my watch later. But I don't know if I want to watch that one now because it was No Way Home was kind of sexist, and I genuinely just put them in my watch later because I thought the titles was were interesting. And I'm like, oh, okay. Why do you think that? What? Why do you have like? Why? Why? What's? Why is that your opinion? I just think it's really interesting to even see if you don't agree with that opinion to just watch it and like see their side of the story and their opinion because I don't I don't know. Maybe he has a valid point and like, you know what? Maybe you're right. Or I'm like, no, you I don't think so. You can think so. I don't think so. So I I just had that one also in my watch later, but I think I want to watch the Kim Kardashian one now. Because I want to see, um, I want to see what people think about that. Because I genuinely don't have an Regarding opinion on Regarding that thing you mentioned you were worried about. Nikki, no one thinks you do. Don't worry. It now I'm going to need you to make sure you put that shovel down and keep it there. Otherwise, you might dig a hole for yourself. You're all good, Nikki. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's, it, it's genuinely just because people like to take stuff out of context. And it's very scary. So whenever I say something that can be taken out of context... I just 
I just want to hey, make Mickey, sure. You literally look so because pretty. it's been so Your frustrating. Your hair and makeup is so beautiful <laughs> and looks so, so amazing together. To have people also, taste a lot of fun fireworks. Um, but yeah, that's fine. It happens. The internet likes to do that. Um, don't trust everything you see. Try and find context around things you see. Because people do do that. And it's very easy to do. Anyways. Um, yeah, let's watch the Kim, Kim Kardashian one. All right. Ooh. Okay. Trigger warning chat. If you don't want to see it, please don't. Please be advised and only watch on your own uh comfort. <laughs> so what's happened uh over the past couple of days that have made me feel like I need to speak on this really quickly for the sake of my vanity if my skin looks really red and patchy yeah and this is made odd, by like, abby cox this is the reason why i got my big glasses on today don't worry about it i just got micro needling done and you're not allowed to wear makeup for like three days afterwards i'm like use moisturizer we had the men gala on monday and i filmed a live reaction to that just watching the red carpet the conversation of the moment has to do with uh, Kim Kardashian wearing uh, Marilyn Monroe's happy birthday dress from 1962. And there is a lot of drama around that, specifically within my community, which is the fashion history, dress history, as well as the historical costuming community. The dress was I so up. Into I've seen... A, okay, well, should we... I don't know if she's going to show it. I'm going to show you before everything for this, for the people who don't have any context. I'm going to give you some context. So the Met Gala, I think is a yearly thing. I think because of COVID it hasn't been, but it's a it's a it's a it's a like a celebrity gala, I don't know, where it's it's mainly to show off your fashion and it's to have like really like the reason it is so sorry, I'm I'm trying to like explain it. I'm not good at explaining it. The reason it's so interesting is because obviously celebrity fashion shapes the way our fashion works. In in the end, as much as weird as it is, and as weird as we would never wear what they are wearing on the red carpets, it still goes down to what we're gonna wear on our day-to-day -day life. Because oh, this is a really interesting aspect. We could put that into our fashion, the fashion that's going to be sold. And that's why it's really interesting to just see all the fashion, all the influences and everything. The Met Gala is an event where every year they have a different theme. This year, it was, what was it? What was it called? It was like a, not medieval. <laughs> what was it? What was it called? Ex no. Uh, theme. <clears throat> gilded glamour exactly it was it was it was gilded glamour and white tie was um the theme uh there's like different themes i can what was it last what was it last year yeah last year it was in america um, a lexicon of fashion 2020 it was about time fashion and duration so it's like it's always like different themes and you you play around and you they get like really expensive um what are they called? Really expensive dressmakers um, and stylists and everything. And um, they then come up with something. Um, but every year there is some, 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 some eggs in there that just don't really go with the theme itself, but they just want to show off their, their dresses, which is fine. I'd say, I'd say it's fine do whatever you want you know you're invited to it you can do whatever you want i would personally want to thank you family disappointment oh my god for the five gifted i appreciate it um but yeah I, I i would personally try to go with theme as much as i can but you know you do you um met gala 2022 kim kardashian wore to to that theme to the gilded glamour theme she wore marilyn monroe's iconic dress um which was the one she sang happy birthday to the president for example it was custom made for her um so yeah and and she she wore it the problem about that is she didn't fit into it because it was custom made to marilyn monroe's 
body um and even though people like use like they call Marilyn Mar Marilyn Monroe the like what is it like she call, they basically call her thick if, if, if it was back then if, if she was alive now they'd call her thick she was not thick Marilyn Monroe was pretty slender if we look at her uh Mar I'll show you Mar Marilyn Monroe <clears throat> If we look at her, she was not. She was she was a pretty slender woman. That, that's Kim Kardashian. Uh, that's Kim Kardashian too. Here, like she she you know she had curves. She was a curvy woman, but she was still slender. Kim Kardashian is too. She's slender, but she has curves, and she has our like a like a really accentuated hourglass figure. So they had to alter the dress. Um which we can, which I'm going to pull up. Um, let me see if I can find a good image of the back. <clears throat> um, okay, I can't find an image. I can't find an image, but basically this is what she looked like on the Met Gala. Um, she still looks awesome. She looks great. Um, but they had to basically sew in a triangle at the back so that she would fit into it. Um, so yeah, and people got really upset about that, uh, which I think is understandable. I, th I think, you know, people are allowed to, to be upset about that. Um, but I would like to hear both sides because, like I said, I personally don't have an opinion on it. Um, I'm, I've never really watched the Met Gala. I was, I, I always find it really interesting to see, but I've, I've never, I was never really inter like big into it. So I just want to see what people th say about it. And I also want to know your guys' opinion. If you guys have an opinion, let me know. Oh, someone said, I mean, they could just, just made a dress inspired by the Maryland dress since they originally clearly didn't fit. I agree with that. They could have definitely, especially because they have the money you know they probably have the materials so yeah i agree with that yeah why kim kardashian wearing marilyn monroe's happy birthday dress was incredibly problematic incredibly <laughs> unethical and incredibly bad but also why it wasn't kim's fault got you there didn't i my name is abby cox i have been a dress a historian which is an, an academic way to say fashion historian basically for almost 15 years now i don't i've Ooh, lost so, track of time i have a master's so she degree has, in of arts and design so she actually has i guess intel on that she actually has knowledge on that which is which i like i like i like that i like that she she can give us her educated knowledge on this topic history i've worked at museums studying historical clothing i obviously have this youtube channel where we talk about historic dress i believe in the importance of conserving our clothing because our clothing is what connects us to the past it is one of the few things that we can all relate to as people when you look at a painting of someone from 200 years ago you go wow that's a really great painting but when you actually can see the clothing in person you can see their sweat stains you can see their unique body forms it makes history so much more human and so much more relatable and so much more real and that's what i talk about here i really like kind of breaking down the snobby academia side of things and making dress history and clothing history and fashion history as relatable as possible i am not a conservator by trade my research assistant and script editor kenna who helped me immensely on this video, she does have training in textile uh, conservation. So her influence okay. on this video So we again have someone with She's incredible knowledge. and I adore her, she's awesome. I also have a bunch of links that I used for reference, links about textile conservation, the rules, the ethics. So if you oh. want to read more- Someone said the fabric stopped being made, so the dress was very special. Interesting. I'm sure if you would have wanted to make a replica though, because I've seen people wear replicas. I'm pretty sure Billie Eilish has worn a replica of maybe Marilyn Monroe, but maybe someone else in the past. Um, so yeah, I think you still can find material that's like really oh, close. Feel free. Also, just another disclaimer, there is information coming out about this dress every day. Obviously, you guys saw I am filming this on Thursday. The Met Gala was on Monday. There could absolutely be more information that comes to light 
well after this video has been filmed and released. Ken and I did our due diligence to get as much information about this from the best sources as possible to the best of our ability. So the links will be down in the description below if you want to read. Part one, why was this bad and unethical? Just to start, clothing is extremely fragile. Once we started using chemical dyes and more mechanical processes to create the textiles, to create the clothing, the ruins of textile more quickly. It is very, very hard to conserve. It's very hard to maintain. It's very hard to keep, and it's very hard to display. When I'm saying costumes, I mean clothing in this instance, just also so we're clear. When we're putting clothing on display or textiles on display, <clears throat> curators are actively understanding. What about full screen? I know a few people have asked me about full screen, but I kind of want to like show off like the title and stuff because I, I don't know. I feel bad just going full screen. Do people usually just watch in full screen? Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather watch it like this. Uh, what's the... Oh, no, it's fine. The act of putting the garment on display, it is actively harming the garment. It's the balance of is the educational and opportunity for the public to see this garment worth the damage that the garment's going to experience. Now, about right. Marilyn Monroe's happy birthday dress in particular, that dress sold at auction several years ago for $5 million. Wow. Okay. And that makes it the most expensive dress of all time. It is now valued at around $10 million. Additionally, I actually not only for watched a Marilyn Monroe. I've always been really interested in Marilyn Monroe. I think she... I mean, everyone thinks she was an Hi, icon. Nikki, she was so three. interesting. Thank you, Great Not Found. Um, so I've actually watched um, a documentary about her recently, about her death um and i don't know i just think it's crazy that this one woman can just captivate this entire planet this way that the that her her dress is like the most expensive dress ever you know i i just think it's so cool monetary value dude there is nothing if i could have been the marilyn monroe of that time that would be crazy <laughs> no <laughs> i would not want to be marilyn monroe marilyn monroe suffered just like it the replica that doesn't count this is it it is the her and princess dress. diana true that, the only one princess diana the same thing crazy how captivating she was yes you're right only expensive it is also of significant american history as well as general western pop culture significance this dress is important it is a signifier of a certain period in our political world, in our social world, and in our pop culture world within the United States itself. Honestly, it should not be at Ripley's. It should be at the Smithsonian. And the reason that Ripley's mm. was able to purchase it is because Ripley's was able to afford that $5 million price tag. This kind of goes into a lot of issues that we have with funding. The Costume Institute is one of the if not the only department at the Met that has to come up with its own funding. That is why the Met Gala started so many years ago. They don't have outside funding. They don't have funding from the museum itself. They have to earn their own money to maintain their own collection. So this also just kind of harkens back to how clothing collection and clothing acquisition and clothing and antique clothing departments and costume and textile departments are not treated equally and there's there's misogyny in there too guys just, just so we're clear because obviously clothing is women's work and it's not considered fine art but i find that you know, really not. interesting though because most big design it's the, it's the same hey, big Nikki, designers doing well big chefs most of them men if you look at the top chefs, the top designers, the top gardeners, if you look at them, men. And then when it comes to like a more domestic place, it's women. Why is that? That's, that's you know, very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> we don't have to hear to that. All of that right there is reason alone why this dress should oh, never thank you, have Mr. been worn Weidel by Kim for Kardashian. The for the it should never months, I appreciate have it. been worn by anybody. It should be carefully preserved, honestly not put on display very often, 
and carefully conserved and maintained because it's going to disintegrate at some point. Morgan was telling me about this because she's been doing a lot of research on this dress. It's made out of a type of silk chiffon that's not produced anymore because it's extremely mm. flammable. Awesome. Furthermore, oh, sure. the International Committee of Museums and the American Alliance of Museums have written actual ethics out. Garments that are in collections, that are in archives, are not full stop, not to be worn. So this was in direct violation of multiple museums' codes of ethics. And this kind of goes to show how Ripley's is basically full And that is because Ripley's so, is not actually a real museum. They are not an accredited museum and they are not adhering to museum ethics. And frankly, if Ripley's wanted to become like accredited, they wouldn't be able to get it at this point because they actively went against museum, multiple museum committees form of ethics. And this is international. This is not just the United States. Like this was decided on in the 1980s and it has been full stop. Those are the rules if you want to be considered a legit museum. While Ripley's is a for-profit tourist trap, that's what it is. They were using a lot of flowery language. So what is Ripley's? Is, Ripley's obviously is the place that owned the, the dress. Does anyone here know what exactly Ripley's is? It's like a, can you believe it, museum? Believe it or not type of stuff. So it's like a, like, I guess like an interactive museum. It's like, oh my God. Like, this is a crazy thing from history. Look at, look at how, how crazy this thing is. A tourist attraction. I see. <clears throat> Basically, a commercial museum profit is more important than converse, uh, conservation and education. I see. Okay. Okay. I see. To pretend and imply that they're more legit than what they actually are. Using words like, we're the stewards of this dress and the utmost care was taken in the conservation and presentation of this dress. That, that's all a bunch of bull. Just, just so we're clear. If they were an actual legit museum, it, it wouldn't see the light of day. Kim's request would have been sent to the spam folder. It, this dress would never have been worn. It would be kept in a climate controlled environment in its own container, not even an archival box, but its own like steel container with pest control, lighting control, humidity control, temperature control. It would not be handled hardly at all just being able to be able to go in and see the dress like to study it would have been a huge ordeal for most museums because it is so fragile and it's so delicate and it's so important i mean Can't yeah it's this dress. if it's made if it's made from a silk that's highly flammable that already tells you like these two things already tell you this is a really delicate dress and it's a one of a kind obviously has actively destroyed the dress. When you wear a garment, you're destroying it. Literally the, the shirt I'm wearing right now, I am actively destroying it because my body has oils. Body oils will destroy clothing. I'm wearing deodorant, just moving around, Subi jumping up in my lap, me holding a cup of coffee, spilling coffee on it, getting stains, moving in the garment because every time you move <clears throat> in something, something's having to give. So when we look at Kim walking the red carpet, one, we already know the dress doesn't fit her and you can see the struggle for her to literally move down the red carpet. Now, I wanna be very clear here. I am not judging Kim Kardashian's body. This is not a hot take on her body. I do not want body shaming comments below. Mm. This is just dress making fact. It didn't fit her, period, full stop. It doesn't matter. She could barely move. You could see stress wrinkles across her hips because her hips are much larger than, than Marilyn Monroe's. And every move she made damaged the dress. The hem is probably damaged even more because she kept stepping on the hem. That was also oh, very no. obvious walking down the red carpet. Also, the red carpet is extremely brightly lit. Even if she changed at the Met itself, just her wearing the dress from that room to the top of the stairs to get changed again has done insurmountable damage on that dress. Why this, is that? This sounds if it's weird, guys, and I understand. Really brightly lit. Is it like, like, like? sun damage like uv fading huh. marilyn was the only person who wore that dress and she basically wore it naked underneath that dress is been impregnated with with 
Marilyn's essence, essentially. Her body oil. It's been her what? Skin, her, her DNA, quite literally. And I know this sounds like super gross, but that's actually one of the really cool things about looking at historic garments because you see the human who wore them in a very different, much more Excuse? intimate capacity. And literally, Kim wearing this dress, she has imposed her body on top of Marilyn's. So this brings up <laughs> another kind of more philosophical question here is who's of more importance we consider that Marilyn Monroe's dress Marilyn Monroe is an icon by Ripley's think saying that they added to its cultural significance with Kim Kardashian they are actively downplaying Marilyn Monroe's significance and implying that Kim Kardashian is of the same level of cultural significance as Marilyn Monroe I'm not gonna really weigh in on this I don't okay I'm gonna weigh in on it though because I don't think in the age that we are now not the not like my i'm 20 like not that age but like the 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 new age like what we're in right now i don't think anyone can be of like as big of significance as marilyn monroe was because if we look at the biggest actress nowadays which is zendaya right now she's an icon she's amazing and she will definitely go down into history as the biggest actress of our time but she is still no marilyn monroe she's zendaya she's her own person and i think that's a big thing to remember i think because kim kardashian is huge every like so many people have heard about kim kardashian at least heard about her she's huge and she's been huge for years but she is still no marilyn monroe because she's kim kardashian and i think we need to remember that and that dress was specifically made for Marilyn Monroe. And I, th and I believe that if a dress was made for Kim Kardashian and Kim Kardashian passes away and it's been decades and that dress has been, you know, held and, and it's, it's been like this, this huge dress, this expensive dress and it's in museums and oh my God, that was Kim Kardashian's dress. I don't think people should wear it like looking at this if it goes to if it if it's on the side of preserving it i think yeah it, it was a dress made for her and if someone is really inspired by her dress then they can make a replica or make an inspired dress not even a replica just an inspired dress i think that would have been way more tasteful um i said i don't have an opinion on it but i actually now have made my opinion up on that knowing more information <laughs> thanks to this video um so yeah i think it's <clears throat> yeah i think i think we need to remember that marilyn monroe was marilyn monroe and kim kardashian is kim kardashian um and zendaya zendaya <laughs> Um, you all are welcome to weigh in this in the comments below. Again, no body shaming though. So the other issue with how this garment's been handled is um, actually the use of cotton gloves. With textile conservation and curatorial like ship, there are a couple of trains of thought, but the old school way of viewing things was to wear cotton gloves when handling garments. However, recent developments and recent research and recent experiences have decided that's actually not good for clothing, especially. This is because cotton will snag on beads, on sequins, on embroidery, on textiles, on buttons. And so them just wearing cotton gloves alone with that dress and then manhandling it, sliding it up, they are actively causing damage to the dress. You don't have the, the tactile feeling that you do with like <laughs> bare hands. So you could actually pull harder on a garment because you can't feel it. If they were going to do this at all, she needed to be wearing nitrile gloves because that allows you to have the actual mobile and tactile dexterity. It's more protect. Someone said, sometimes I find that Kim is heartless. I personally don't know too much about like the Kardashian Jenners, but one thing that we need to remember is that they're all humans. The only difference is that they have been in the public eye for years now. So every, like I, yes, they're greedy and they will do some shady things. I agree with that. I've heard some really weird things about that. But they're, st they're also humans. And every single thing that they will do will be elevated in the news. That is the difference. So I don't think they're heartless. I don't think they're these like horrible horrible human beings i think they're just they're they just 
yeah i don't know they're human you know and they will make their mistakes the only the only thing is that it is elevated um but again i don't know too much about them i'm not defending them or anything um yeah i i i, I think I think we shouldn't burn people on the stakes anymore, but instead, I guess, educating them on what they did wrong, try to realize that people grow and change. Maybe they don't. Like I said, I don't know much about them, but um, I have... I've watched like two episodes of like keeping up with the Kardashians ones and I actually could because they're influencers right the Kardashian Jenners are influencers so I could actually see a lot of the struggles that they went through I was like oh you know what I can see that I think Kim was talking about I think it was like about hosting Saturday Night Live and Kim was talking about how anxious she feels and how many eyes are on there and what if she messes up everyone's gonna make fun of her again they posted this crying meme of her that's like out there and and it's like you know all these things and I was like yeah you know what they you know they also have their own they seem to dis disconnect from the real world that's because they are they are disconnected from the real world for sure they live in their huge ass ma like mansions with millions and billions of dollars in their bank account. Of course, they're disconnected from the real world. That's I'm not even I'm not even gonna say they're not. Um, but they also you know maybe that's also why they're gonna they're gonna do really stupid and fucked up shit sometimes. But yeah. But I don't I don't really know much about them. Like I said, I've watched like two episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashians and I had sympathy with them. That's basically the conclusion I can go I can I can go to. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Active, it's not going to catch on things in the same way as cotton gloves. Now, there are going to be some counter arguments to this. Um, I've seen some pop up on social media, but I want to address them just kind of head on. One of the things Ooh. that I've seen. Someone said, I feel like the company is mistaken for even considering letting her wear it uh where it where it and them as professionals should know better that's ex i think that's exactly the point that she is making um she's saying that of course it was it wasn't really nice of kim kardashian to ask if she can wear it but it was the mistake of the company for even accepting it because they should have known better they should have been there to preserve the dress and to keep the dress safe and to make sure, you know, the rules are being kept. Um, Kim Kardashian didn't know better. She was like, oh, can I wear Marilyn Monroe's dress? And they said yes, you know, um, which is probably like an ethical, like an ethical, like not really ethical. And that's true. She like her own ethics, ethics there are quite messed up. Um, but yeah, definitely the company should have said no. Even if it is Kim Kardashian or anyone else. People be like, uh, why is it that it's okay for this person to wear an antique garment, but it's not okay for Kim to wear Marilyn's dress? Other than I think that's fairly obvious, this dress is one of a kind, it's historically significant, it's extremely delicate, it's a part of American history, therefore should not be worn. Also, it's a, the most expensive dress of all time. Doesn't actually cover it enough. It's in an archive collection. It goes against actual museum ethics. Privately owned property, whether you like it or not, there's really nothing you can say about it. You know, if I wanted to wear one of my garments in my personal collection, there's nothing anyone can do about it except just shame me on the internet. It's my personal property, therefore I can do with it as I see fit, just like I should be able to do what I want with my body. Sorry, I find it really interesting talking about the Kardashians now. Someone said, I honestly find the Kardashians fascinating. I like the influence they have. Um, it's unprecedented, uh, have is unprecedented, which, yeah, I it's crazy. And I believe that no person should have the amount of influence that the kardashians have and i'm pretty sure that the kardashians know that because everyone in their position would be like holy shit when did this get so big why am i here what is going on because as a human like even even when we had like like 
alphas leading the pack, leading the human pack, they didn't have millions and billions of people like following every single one of their staff. No, they had like their, their small pack and that was it. And that was great. And that was what we were made for. But we're not made for millions and billions of people like there, you know? And, and I think that's also a big stress factor. Again, I'm not trying to, I'm not here to like, defend the kardashian jenners because i don't know them i know they did some messed up stuff um but i think I, I think that's also like a fact you know i think that's just a fact to say <clears throat> because it's my body and do with it as i see fit Thank you. Historic garments, and there were other historic garments worn actually on the red carpet. Laura Harrier was reported to be wearing a quote unquote gilded age petticoat. Barn, like what, we well, don't really know what it looks like, but if she was just wearing like a plain white cotton petticoat, honest, honestly guys, there's so many of them. There's tons of them. They're that not was a actually bright that historically that looks significant. Really good. You know, they are essentially the white t-shirt of today. And so it's not as big of a deal. You know, we were seeing original antique garments on display. So what makes those okay, but Kim's different? Again, how many exist? Wearing a dress from 1962, when you say it that way, it's not a big deal. I wear dresses from the 1960s. I've worn dresses from the 1940s and 50s, but I haven't worn a one-off dress of historical significance. And that's the difference. What we deem acceptable within the vintage wearing and antique clothing wearing communities, it's a sliding scale. And Marilyn Monroe's dress is on the end of the scale that says do not wear it. Celebrity culture, ultra rich culture believe that they're entitled to wear these antique garments, that they're entitled to wear garments of historical significance. By Kim wearing this dress, it sets that precedent and it's awful and it's uncalled for. However, mm. I will also say it's very much on theme for the Gilded Age because guess who also was super entitled to think that they could wear stuff of historical significance without any repercussion. The wealthy aristocracy of the Gilded Age. This one's going to be oh, controversial shit. for you guys because because uh, you guys aren't going to probably like what I have to say. Is Kim Kardashian at fault for this? Ultimately, no. Why? She doesn't know. She is nothing more than basically a mannequin for this dress. You know, mm. she's not a part of the dress history world. She's not a part of the mu museum like world. She's, yeah, not, a, the she's museum. not a conservator. She's not a collector. She's not a curator. She is a celebrity and she had a damn good idea and it worked out for her. What she is at fault for is causing a great deal of trauma and triggering the shit out of people who have eating disorders, disordered eating issues, body dysmorphia, and just oh, general the body warning, issues chat. for young people the and warning. just adults everywhere. The fact that she owned up to doing essentially what I think is a keto diet and losing six, 16 pounds in in three weeks is not only bad for the keto community as a whole, but it's bad for everyone. That's what she should be ashamed of. The people who are actually to blame in the situation are the upper heads of Ripley's. So Sorry. I'm talking the CEO, I'm talking presidents, vice presidents, or some department heads, even people like that, PR mm -hmm. heads. We oh, are no. not going to blame conservators who had this message passed down because this, this trail of chaos started with an email that got sent to the PR head, that got sent to the CEO, that got sent to the president, and then it trickles back down. Curators and conservators are told what to do. They don't actually really have a say in the situation, usually. I will say that this is a brilliant marketing ploy, like from a business perspective, both on Kim's part as well as Ripley's part. Well, uh, yeah, but who wants to, because everyone, because not everyone, but so many people, people were enraged about that. And a lot of people were like a lot of people were like oh how how could kim kardashian do that and they were enraged about kim kardashian i didn't see ripley's name around at all actually but how is that a brilliant marketing st strategy i guess it's like oh who owns the dress who who owns the marilyn monroe dress oh that's crazy but it 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 more i guess negative pr a lot of the times is also pr and blah 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 companies love just if people talk about them but in the long run, it is never good to run your business to the ground because you want any kind of PR, I feel like. Because this got people talking about the dress. They're now putting it on display with Kim and Marabilia. Yeah, this no such thing as bad publicity. To get people to talk about the dress, to then come and visit the dress, to just bring in more money. Vogue is also to blame. But do people they actually do that? the private dressing room. Is the Met to blame in this? That depends. Again, we're not going to blame 
curators, and we're not gonna blame conservators on this, but was the Met complacent? Maybe. Mm. I wouldn't know. Probably. No, again, this is going back up to to higher ups. It did cause uh, a lot of people talking of power, about it. Um, who usually are cis white men who don't respect uh, clothing, who don't respect these departments. Again, I want to remind you that the Costume Institute is the only department within the Met that has to secure its own funding. Woo, guys, Instagram was lit <laughs> the following day. I assume Twitter was also on fire. Um, even like decrepit Facebook was pretty happening. The LA Times released an article. The headline is from the LA Times, conservators speechless that Kim Kardashian wore Marilyn Monroe's dress to the Met Gala. Textile conservators and fashion curators are appalled that beauty mogul Kim Kardashian donned Marilyn Monroe's iconic Jean-Louis gown for the 2022 Met Gala. Quote from Sarah Sakut. Uh, Turo. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I am frustrated because it sets back what is considered professional treatment for historic costume. So my mm -hmm. worry is that colleagues in historic costume collections are now going to be pressured by important people to let them wear garments. Kenna reached out to some- I find it also really interesting because if it was any other historic piece, they wouldn't do the same. Imagine, imagine, I'm gonna go with the Kardashians again. Imagine one of the Kardashians or Jenner's went into an art museum and was like, yo, the Mona Lisa, I want to draw on that. Let me make that better. Let me change the colors of that. And the Louvre would just go like, you know what? That's a really good idea. That would, that would be great for our PR. Like, I feel like if it was anything else, it wouldn't, it, it, it wouldn't have gone on. So why why the dress <laughs> because it's a piece of clothing and clothes are made to be worn well then paintings i guess i guess it's different with paintings because they're like finished art pieces but paintings are made to be painted on you know like i feel like i feel like that's not really a valid argument in this because it's still a historic piece and it's still a historic art piece because ultimately clothes are the way people express themselves and that is and and dre have you ever seen dressmaking oh my god that's a that's an art form of itself especially like 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 gowns and stuff i mean i guess that wasn't really a gown because it was just like a i don't know maybe it was a gown i don't know i don't know about that but yeah summer lee their their colleagues and friends and summer lee has done videos about kim wearing marilyn's dress and and raising some questions with it here's what she had to say on it i am hey, just in disbelief. Hey, thank you so much for the raid i appreciate it i hope you had a good stream everyone we are just out here watching some videos uh we are right now watching don't blame kim kardashian for the marilyn monroe dress disaster at the met gala by abby cox and we're just talking about um the, the, the Met Gala dress and opinions and the Kardashians and all of that. Um, disclaimer, I don't know much about the Kardashian Jenners. Uh, I said that to my chat already. I've only watched two episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I had sympathy with them, but I, I, I also can see that they have messed up in the past. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all that I'm saying. I hope you had a good stream. That this even happened because rule number one of any museum object is to handle it as little as possible and certainly never wear them. I was right. very glad to learn that Kardashian only wore the authentic dress for just a few minutes just for the red carpet and then she changed into a replica dress for the rest so of the So they night had too. a replica dress on hand but still made her wear the actual dress. That doesn't make sense to me like eat in but then learning that there was a replica dress yeah. really makes me question why the original ever had to be jeopardized in the first exactly. place because like what if it was damaged in transportation or just in those few minutes that it was born <gasps> imagine someone just it. stepped someone someone tripped over Ky kylie jenner no over kim kardashian and rips the dress oh my god Ooh, who do you think okay going to like internet culture and the backlash and and all those things who do you think would have gotten the most backlash kim kardashian or the person tripping over her that's really interesting because i think they both would have gotten backlash but who do you think would have gotten more kim 
Fair enough. Probably Kim. Okay, most people are saying Kim. Yeah, that makes sense. It was damaged. You are right. It was damaged. Uh, but like if it was like ripped, you know? Greek chat with like the textile on the carpet. People uh, walk people, around. Just uh, someone actually commented. I think it's interesting that she was okay, opening herself Kim. up to critique of quote unquote gilding herself in a very valuable historic garment. I think this kind of brings up the larger issue of just the theme. Depends on who. That's also a big thing. It depends on who. It depends on who tripped. Because the, if the internet already didn't like the person that tripped, that would have just given it more fuel, and sadly if the person was a person of color that person would have gotten more backlash too just going from the experience that the internet has given us which is really sad and not correct but that is a very that that, that is a thing to like keep like in mind thinking about that i think yeah don't understand the theme in that the gilded age is not actually golden. It is gilded over. Gilded is cheap. Gilded is gold leaf over cheap wood. This is when we were hmm. fighting for unions, labor rights, fair wages, children, child labor, immigrant labor, you know, workers' rights. All of this was happening during the Gilded Age. Doesn't that sound familiar? So Kim wearing this dress, feeling entitled to wear this dress, is actually extremely on theme the plus side to this is that dress history textile conservation museum collecting museum collections of antique garments and textiles it's all being discussed in the broader media and in the general kind of population people are actively discussing it the irony that it happened with the can you hear the, the music in the Roe background Wade, that irony is not lost my neighbor is listening that to music right now <laughs> i can't actually put into words right now um but try and look at the positive side you know it is bringing validation no okay i'm glad historic dress this music okay i'm glad it's bringing validation to costume collections it is bringing validation to textile conservators and conservation and it's bringing validity to our field of study because we have fought dress historians have fought for decades for generations okay. most of us being women <laughs> to be taken seriously to have <laughs> our field of study be understood as academically valid that is and a valid worthy point. of study. The fact that we're having this light shined so brightly on the importance of dress and the importance of clothing when it comes to the understanding of our history, our cultural history, our nation's history, other nations' history, women's history, men's history, like just societal history is so validating. It's frustrating. <laughs> Someone just said half of the chat answering Nikki's questions. The other half, oh my God, Nikki, your hair. <laughs> I'm glad you like my hair, chat. I appreciate it. Um, I'll probably do it like this whenever, I don't know, whenever I have the time, because it takes, a, it takes a little bit of time, but I'm glad you guys like it. <laughs> Thank you for the sub, Poppy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for streaming today. But it is validating. Thank you. Thank you for watching. But I think probably the first here. thing that we can work on, guys, is maybe the Costume Institute should not have to do its own funding. So they mm. don't have to have these galas to then have people desecrate antique garments that are of historical significance. With that, that is my slightly ranty, semi off the cuff, it's 8.44 in the morning oh, bless video that. on this. I, if you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, guys. That does help the algorithm both for me and as for you. If you are new here and you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you are not new here and you have not subscribed, what are you doing? That kind of <laughs> feelings, not gonna lie. Go Aww. With that, I usually post every other Sunday, but this was an Thank impromptu you, video, so there'll be another video next week if you're here watching that in real time. With that, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Uh, I'm opening the comments up for debate. The one thing I will say, no body shaming, guys. What's no that channel? The channel is no Abby Cox. Shaming, okay? We're not talking about Kim as a person I'll give here. Her a, not, I'll give her a mm -mm, sub. Don't do it. You can be mad at her, though, for the 16-pound thing. That all right. With that, I'll see you guys here next time. Woo! Thank you, Abby. Okay. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. I'm wondering if there is um, a video on like the other side, like someone who thinks 
um who thinks like oh it's not a big deal like you who, who has like the, the other opinion because it would be really interesting to hear the other op i just find it really interesting even if i don't agree with it so i wonder um Ooh, actually i really like mina lee um this person and they just uploaded let's discuss the obsession with marilyn monroe oh, hello, my i clicked it um but the title was let this woman rest and you know what i want to watch that i want to see what what they have to say yeah my beautiful doves my name is mina and welcome thank you back Bobby, to my for channel five. i appreciate it. thank you thank you Oh, it's loud. Given the recent events, um, the Met Gala, and the oh, fact no. that I think Christie's sold Andy Warhol's portrait of Marilyn Monroe for the affordable cost of two hundred million dollars, oh my god! I thought it would finally be a good opportunity for me to do a video on Marilyn Monroe. I've only covered one other star on this channel so far, which was Audrey Hepburn, which I did like months ago so if i could redo that video today it'd probably be a lot more expansive but i digress it is what it is but similarly to the audrey hepburn video for this video i'm not going to be delving too much into marilyn's actual biography and like all the events of her life right. and focus more what we on her cultural impact and why people are so for. obsessed with her still today similarly to audrey hepburn who that is really interesting war because because none of us i guess no, yeah, none of us grew up with Marilyn Monroe being in the media and being that big person, but we were all, I, I love her. I think she's so cool and so interested, you know, interesting, you know, so my head's still like this woman. So I, I, I find it like, I would find that really interesting to know why we are still so obsessed with her time conditions as a kid only she to is an icon. One of Hollywood's she most is beloved an icon. actresses. And Marilyn honestly, also had the make honestly, I'm really glad that we still I don't, like I, I, maybe my opinion is gonna change or it's gonna it's gonna shift. But right now, I'm really glad that we still idolize her because it's a woman, guys. It's a woman, a powerful woman that we are idolizing. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know. So I think it's. I think that's really cool. Kings <clears throat> for Cinderella story. Born Norma Jean, Marilyn's studio publicist, initially crafted a story around her difficult childhood, being shuffled from one unkind foster home to another, to provide a story that made her a more relatable figure to audiences watching. Before Marilyn had any starring roles, Robert Kahn described her in an article as a blonde apparition in a strapless black cocktail gown, a little breathless as if she were Cinderella just stepped out from a pumpkin coach. Many of Marilyn's films mm. also reinforce the Cinderella trope, with her fictional counterpart starting out as a lost, innocent girl who ends up with a wealthy love match by the end. So, there's a lot to unpack for but this But that's video, how the so movies were back then. Dive right in. That I think only recently... Not recently, but like... The, the, the way women are perceived in movies is changing, and it's changing every day with every movie. Um, but back then... That's what the movies were. It was, oh, helpless woman. Oh, my God, my savior. Oh, I'm just looking for the perfect man to take care of me. You know, like it was like it was like the whole thing of like, that's what it was. And that's what what women were perceived as. Um, so I think it makes a lot of sense that Marilyn Monroe played these women because she was to be made this woman, you know. Marilyn Monroe continues to be one of the highest earning dead celebrities um, for years now, which is, of course, a morbid and kind of inappropriate industry to begin with. According to Forbes, last year, the total earnings for the 13 best compensated dead celebrities was $1 billion. The reason is um, when Marilyn died in 1962, she died with a net worth. I'm looking of for the perfect woman to take care of me. Like, <laughs> <roughing> like $7.5 <laughs> million dollars today. 
But because of her lavish spending and generous donations, when her estate was settled, uh, her net worth was actually like $370,000. In her will, she divided her money between her personal secretary, a few of her close friends, her half-sister, and also left a hefty trust for her mother. The important part wow. here is that she gave That's her sad. acting coach, Lee Strasberg, 75% of her intellectual property rights and 25% to her therapist, Dr. Marianne Chris. When Strasberg passed away in 1982, his share passed on to a second wife, Anna Mizra who I'm not sure ever met Marilyn because she married Lee in 1967. Afterwards, Anna signed deals that allowed Marilyn's name and face to be plastered on all kinds of different products. And then in 2011, she sold her stake to Authentic Brands Group for 20 to $30 million. Also in 1999, Christie sold some of Marilyn's belongings for $13.5 million. Among Has her therapist written an all, like a book about her? That, because if not, that, that's a waste. I feel like also yeah it's weird that they just that, that, that they just sell the rice they're like oh Mer this person yeah you give me 20 30 millions and then you can you can plaster it all over yeah among these her driver's license sold for $145,000 isn't that unprofessional though photos you are right but I think so I'm not saying like oh my god sensationalized and blah 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 I'm saying it more because there was a there was obviously obviously a reason why Marilyn gave her therapist the rights, you know, and it might be might because because confi oh it's confi confidentiality problems. But why would she have the rights for it? Months. That's what I am wondering. One of watching you. Thank you for everything, you, Nikki. Less than three. <clears throat> you know, it would be an interesting book, but an invasion of privacy. Hmm. You are right. That is a valid point. I did not think about that. I did not think about that. Yeah. No, you are right. But that... Hmm. Oh my god. Can you hear the background? She is smart, she wouldn't do it for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that's this person is raising a really uh issue. Cause that's what I was thinking. I wasn't saying like, oh my god, she should write a book about what they were talking about and all her issues and everything. I think I, I just think that her therapist probably would have been would have known about her time, like about just her timeline and her life and what she put out there the most because she had the most intel on it i'm not saying like oh my god if marilyn monroe struggled with depression i want to know everything about that i'm just saying like her therapist probably had her like childhood to teenage to growing up to getting famous to acting to all these things and not you know N not like not like oh my god i really want her to to i really want to know about all these struggles it's it's more like she probably would have been the most like certified person to write an autobiography about her because she knows her life and it would have given a different perspective on her life event exactly but yeah i don't know that's that's just i, I just think that would be really interesting but uh you are right comfy confidentiality issues and stuff do make sense but yeah of her dog math Anyways. went for two hundred twenty two thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> because these money hungry corporate heads who virtually have like no attachment to the real maryland are the ones making the decisions for where to put maryland's face and name it's no surprise that her face is literally just like plastered on every kind of product from like absolute vodka to mercedes-benz to like yada 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 and because her face is like literally everywhere, that also leads to this long-standing cultural fascination for her. It's also worth noting that most of these photos of her are the same famous ones. Her standing over the mm. subway grate in her white dress, her publicity photo for the movie Niagara, which is the same photo that Andy Warhol used in her collage. I literally remember learning about Marilyn Monroe before I even watched any Marilyn Monroe movies. I knew about the subway yeah. grate scene before I ever watched The Seven Year Itch, which is where the subway scene is from. 
And because her images are disseminated so widely and so carelessly, Marilyn has become like an ever glamorous image, virtually a brand in our popular imagination. According to Virginia Postrel in her book, The Power of Glamour, promotional photos turned ephemeral scenes into permanent stills. We remember many of the most famous movie scenes, not from seeing them flashing by on the screen, but from their repetition as printed photographs. Such images lift scenes out of the narrative flow, intensifying their grace and with it their glamour. Like wedding portraits or vacation postcards, the photos preserve transient experiences, distilling them into ideal moments. Mm, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Even though when we think of the sexual revolution, we think of the 60s and 70s, Richard Dyer notes in his book, Heavenly Bodies, sex was seen as perhaps the most important thing in life in 50s America. He deduced this because there were two Kinsey reports, um, one on men that was published in 1948, I believe, and then the one on women, which was published in 1953. Anyone unfamiliar with the Kinsey reports? Kinsey's research championed the normalization of sexual diversity and fluidity, and his books were so popular and controversial at the time that the New York Times even dubbed him the father of the sexual revolution in 1997. Also in wow. the 50s, Confidential Magazine and Playboy released their first issues. Betty Friedan notes in The Feminine Mystique that from 1950 to 1960, the interest of men in the details of intercourse paled before the avidity of women, both as depicted in these media and as its audience. Part of the reason is that movies in the 50s were competing with a lot of like independent leisurely home-based activities like television um, reading and home-based sports so one of the things that hollywood tried to do to set movies apart was to uh, experiment with some more provocative material that would not be appropriate to air on television of course the widespread availability of didn't happen until much later and then the Hayes code was still in effect into the 1960s but hollywood was definitely starting to loosen its production code and Marilyn Monroe, either intentionally or unintentionally, was a pioneer of this Hollywood shift. Sarah Churchill writes in her book, The Many Lives of Marilyn, part of the reason Marilyn became so identified with the static concept of sexuality is that she began her career as a pinup. A pinup sold a coy, sanitized hair. image of the sexually available Miss woman. Karen. Most famously, she <clears throat> modeled nude during one photo session with Tom Kelly in 1948 when she was struggling to make ends meet in Hollywood. She made $50 from the photo, which is known as Golden Dreams, and the negatives oh were sold to a company called Calendars. In March How much was that back then? Like, obviously, like... Pog. I hope your day gets better. Thank you, Yale. Boop, bop, beep, boom, pow, Obviously, boom, it was more back then. But I feel for... I No, it makes sense because back then she wasn't she wasn't that big. So it was 4K. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was like, oh my God, if Marilyn Monroe did that in her like prime time, that's like way too little. But if, if yeah, if she got like... If she got like... A lot. Um, then that makes sense. Major news story that Marilyn had posed nude for a calendar company. But at the time, relatively few people actually got a hold of these calendars and saw these photos. So in 1953, it Hugh sucks. Hefner and it's the crazy that it was so popularized, especially after she got big. Oh my god, this woman has made a new photo shoot. That's the thing about it. It would be roughly $600 today. Hmm. For a whole photo shoot? That's not enough. At all. I feel like. But I don't know. I don't know Hollywood rates. And especially back then. The negatives from the calendar company and used the photos to promote his new issue of his new magazine, Playboy. He bought the negatives for only $500 and he made millions, of course, from Playboy, never having paid Marilyn any cent of the profits. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Oh, Marilyn I've tried heard to so many at the time weird choosing, things like, about Hugh Hefner. Um, just... when interrogated by the press. <clears throat> In an interview with Elaine Murphy, man Monroe said planet. that she'd done the photo because she needed the money, that Kelly's wife was present at the time, and besides, I'm not ashamed of it, I've done nothing wrong. Yeah, Time magazine true. wrote of the whole affair, Marilyn believes in doing what comes naturally. Unfortunately, all this like laissez-faire behavior I like that, behavior, I like that she uh, didn't apologize. This, like, it belief was that like, Marilyn was like oh, I'm inherently so sorry, a very guys. sexual person, which is like a totally fine thing now, but in the 1950s, society was like a lot more Puritan, and therefore like, uh, her sexuality was like sensationalized and it was used as an excuse to 
ogle at her body and uh, diminish her acting abilities. In 1956, Monroe had her only cover of Time magazine, which included a long feature-length profile. The writer noted, Marilyn Monroe's hip-flipping, lip-twitching, frolicsomely sensual figure is the latest curve on the path of erotic progress that has led I Hollywood don't from like, the slithering vamp to the good nature tr- I don't like that they like... That's, that's, that's one thing. Because she got so big, but she got so big because everyone sexualized her. Well, she was a smart woman. Marilyn Monroe was a smart woman. I mean, obviously, because she 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 saw that and she was like, "I'll just keep going. I'll just do that." Um. Yeah, no, it's it's just weird. Cramp. In Coronet, Grady Johnson calls her a luscious blonde with the tree ripened sex appeal. It's just weird that like these words even. Why would you use these words to describe another human being? You are literally just reducing that human being to a sexual object, you know? And that's, I think that's what I find. And, and obviously, like, yeah, that was the time back then, and that's what they did to women, which is not too excusable that way. It's just that's how it was, and it was awful. And I think we should talk about that because I feel like we... As much as we think we have progressed from that with all the fucking abortion shit that's going on and all the like just weird ways people treat women still, we have not evolved from that. It's just it's just disguised itself and found different ways to be to still happen, which is so awful full-breasted girl who has hitched a sex wagon to Hollywood's fastest climbing star, going as far as to state that she is developing a singularly unnecessary skill as an actress. The view that Marilyn was not an actress but a model was very popular. Laurence Olivier, who directed and starred in The Prince and the Showgirl with Marilyn Monroe, said this of Marilyn. Inside, somewhere or other, she doesn't want to act. She wants to show herself. That's another thing. She is a model by accident or by a villainy of nature forced to be an actress. That's the answer to her. So first of all, Marilyn Monroe um, made The Prince and the Showgirl after she studied method acting with Lee Strasberg at the Actor's Studio. And for anyone who doesn't know who Lee Strasberg is, he's like the father of method acting. He's trained a lot of people like Al Pacino. You know what that... That reminded me of, you know what that speech reminded me of? Do you know these like woke, like guy podcasts that are I like, love chill hanging yeah, out with you if she has social Your media, she's me cheating on you. Who is she going to show? If she posts bikini pics, she's a whore. Do you know these? That's what that reminded me of. That's literally what that reminded me of. Oh my God. Et cetera, like he's like well known um, in the acting space. And while I don't defend the <clears throat> fact that she struggled memorizing her lines and that she often showed up late, um, when watching this movie, anyone the can alphas, see that she does yeah, a way the better alpha job podcast, than Lawrence in terms of comedic The acting. alpha podcast that will never like be respected by a woman because they don't respect women. Yeah, these alphas, the alphas that are on their on their alpha grind, getting them bitches. Ugh, ugh. Horrible. So I don't really actually know what to talk awful. About. <laughs> Another important thing to note when it comes to Marilyn's appeal is that in the mid twentieth century, white women were viewed as like the prized possession of the white <laughs> Wait, men, what, which what, is what? why in a lot of old movies there's this constant theme of like white the men. One where they say gravity women. doesn't um, affect women. The they do. Offensive, disturbing example. Is oh my god, the- chat! I think I have a new content idea. We should react to those. We should react. I write this down. Holy shit. That is so funny. Oh my god. Yeah, we're reacting to Alpha Podcast next. <laughs> oh my god. I just want to laugh at some at some boys. <laughs> oh my god. Gravity doesn't affect women. Sorry. <laughs> 
Birth of a Nation, which um, was a movie that was released in the 1910s and glorifies the KKK. Dyer also argues that blonde hair was frequently associated with wealth and platinum blonde, which Marilyn was for a time, visually rhymed with silver or gold dress and jewelry. Blondness is generally racially unambiguous because um, not a lot of people of color um, have blonde hair. Like, it's pretty much, like, associated with whiteness. And in something that's important to note is, like, during the 1950s, like, interracial, like, marriage, I think, was still illegal in a lot of states. That's crazy. And a lot of Hollywood movies and plays, like, centered on this, like, scandal of being mixed race. Take, for instance, the 1957 movie Raintree County, which stars Elizabeth Taylor, who is a prominent uh, brunette actress of the time. And her character in the movie, there's like a moment where she goes crazy because she thinks she might have a black mother. Or uh, another example is the 1959 remake Imitation of Life, which features the stories of two girls, the white brunette Susan Conner, who plays a white passing black girl Susie, and the blonde Sandra Dee, who plays the white girl Annie. In the movie, Susie deals with internalized racism and constantly attempts to deny her blackness. Dyer recalls how Marilyn's blondness and subsequent whiteness is often emphasized in a lot of her movie roles. Look at her gleam in there. It's a pale white. Oh my god. <laughs> So Richard Dyer refers to Marilyn's archetype as the girl, um, which he describes succinctly as being defined solely so creepy. by age, know, gender, right? and sexual appeal. He elaborates, she's knitted into That's the fabric of the film though. through point of view shots located I mean, in male characters. I know it's a thing, and it used to be a thing, which is just a whole different conversation that's just fucked up in its own way. Um, but it's it's basically the same thing of like the way movies portrayed people is was and probably still is just fucked up even in the later films and virtually always in the earlier ones she is set up as an object of male sexual old media gaze. as a trip so Her character awkward in the seven year yeah age is probably the have most you seen like of old like 1950s like commercials most of them were racist as hell for no reason for no reason this trope because in the movie Marilyn's character doesn't actually have a name she's portrayed as this innocently desirable girl who's made the butt of lots of jokes and the movie even pushes the idea and that sexist. Marilyn is True. literally and her sexist. character because one of the jokes is when the main character Richard is wondering who his upstairs neighbor is and he says sarcastically maybe it's Marilyn Monroe Marilyn's characters tend to embody both the sexual and the naive mm. are you sure you want to waste your yeah. champagne now that you know that I'm married I think it's wonderful that you're married. I think it's just delicate. I mean, I wouldn't be lying on the floor in the middle of the night in some man's apartment drinking champagne if he wasn't married. That's a very interesting line of reasoning. And unlike other Hollywood actresses who were cast in a sexual light, uh, Marilyn was never an ordinary girl next door type. Her sex appeal was almost always exaggerated and she brought humor and lightness to the majority of her roles. Another good example of this archetype is in the movie that I referenced before, which is The Prince and the Showgirl. In it, there's a scene where Laurence Olivier, who plays the regent, makes this poetic speech. I have never known what it is to love or be loved. It is like the legend of the sleeping princess. Only here it is the prince who sleeps and awaits the kiss of the beautiful young maiden that will bring him back to life. You mean you want me to kiss you? You are so literal. Marilyn is actually like a great comedy yeah. actress. Like she's very funny. Isn't it silly though? What is it, astigmatism? No, just blind as a bat. Me too. Oh really? Then why aren't you wearing glasses? And I don't think people appreciate this enough nice. because I don't know why comedy is viewed as this like lesser, less serious film medium in the film commentary I guess space. She played, like, a lot but of I think comedies. it's because I actually it's really have, hard to make a I good comedy. I actually have not um, seen any Marilyn Monroe movies. That's on me. Yeah, I'm ad uneducated in that regards. I'm very. I'm not. When it comes to old media, I don't know too much about old media, especially when it comes to when what kind of media was happening like in what decade like 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s i don't have no i i don't know that's all a blur for me that's all a blend and it's just happened um 80s i kind of i can kind of distinguish and then obviously 90s too um 
So yeah. Because a lot of actors are really bad at comedy because comedy requires you to have really precise and really good, frankly good, uh, line delivery and comedic timing and facial expressions. There's a lot that goes into it that a I'm lot not of people allow, I know, uh, to, don't appreciate. When it comes to those times though, I know a lot about women's history because that's what I'm interested in. I think, I, I guess that's like just a personal like interest thing. I'm very interested in like, the rise of feminism and the rise of equality and the rise of the fight for all these things and then when it comes to movies i love movies and i'm really interested in movies but like more like recent movies i guess like more like i was already born (laughs) or i was just about to be born when this movie came out um, so yeah. Marilyn's specific brand of comedy was based on <laughs> wide-eyed literalism, non sequiturs, and misinterpretation. And this is like the type of comedy that she had in real life as well. I For example, it. in 1952, quoted in Time magazine, when asked if she had anything on during the nude photo shoot, she said, I had the radio on. Sarah Churchwell nice. writes, the literalness became part nice. of her comic like persona that. on screen and off, helping to blur the boundaries between the two. And this blurring was a problem because critics started to think that Marilyn was just playing herself in a lot of these movies. One reviewer said, like a flower, Marilyn has always been at her best simply by being. And while Marilyn may not have had the range or may not have had the opportunity to develop a range. I- Thank you so much for the raid, Jack. I appreciate Oh, no. You know what, chat? I'm going to call him out right now. And he's probably going to watch now because I said I'm going to call him out. But I'm calling out Jack Manifold right now. Because Jack Manifold, when he raids someone, doesn't watch the stream. When I raid someone, I at least want to say, I, I at least want to hear the, oh, thank you for the raid. And that's like, that's usually when I click off. But Jack Manifold, he does not watch the stream. He, he raids and then leaves. He raids and then dips. You know why I know that? He didn't even know I was on a new setup. He didn't even know what my new setup looks like. That's 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 your stream. <laughs> I hope you had a good stream, everyone. We're watching. We're just watching some videos. We've just been watching some video essays. Uh, we're right now watching a video about Marilyn Monroe. Um, <clears throat> because before that, thank you, Sunny, for the sub. Because before that, we were watching a video about the Met Gala and her dress. And then I wanted to see if there's like any like polarizing opinions and videos about polarizing opinions but we didn't find one except uh, 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 instead we found uh, this video by mina lee called let's discuss the obsession with marilyn monroe and i thought that was really interesting um so that's what we're watching right now yeah uh you are very welcome to stay um it's 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 just a discussion we're just having a discussion and if you have any opinions and anything you're very welcome to say them because I think it's very fun to talk to the about these things with chat. Because I'm I'm not all knowing. I'm just I'm just I'm just a silly streamer. I think just casting off her acting ability by saying, "Oh, she's just playing just herself," his hot dog. is incredibly Good reductive. For him. The truth is, Marilyn was acting her whole life. The persona of Marilyn Monroe was something that she crafted herself and something that she had to upkeep during any kind of like public appearance. And while she's probably the most famous case of someone adopting a persona, she's definitely not the only one. As I mentioned mm. in my Audrey Hepburn video, Audrey was known for playing these quirky down-to-earth girl Marie next Steph door types, oh, bro, which is evidently why she was up. cast in it. Breakfast at Tiffany's, despite the writer of the story, Truman Capote, saying he wanted Marilyn for the role. Studios at the time were concerned that the movie I watched her documentary on Netflix, it's very good. I did too, Maryland actually. As Holly- I watched her documentary on Netflix too. Um, I watched it very recently, actually. Well, not very recently. I watched it in LA um, with Minx and the Botas sisters. Um, and it was very interesting. I found it was really interesting. It was about. It was mainly about her upbringing and about how she lived. And then it was also about her death and speculating about her death. Because there are a lot of, I guess, conspiracy theories about her death. And if she got killed, if she, if she took her own life, why she died. There are a lot of cons- conspiracy theories. And obviously, like, if... The Kennedy family was involved and what was going on. It's very interesting. Uh, thank you, Poo Poo Goose, for the sub. Oh, Luke, thank you for the gifting us up. Appreciate it. Holly Golightly, because in the book, Holly Golightly is a call girl. Um, so they decided to cast Audrey to make <laughs> the the movie more censor friendly, which is kind of ridiculous because Audrey still like 
plays a call girl um but because audrey had this reputation of being just like this very classy very elegant lady they felt like by casting her it would balance out some of the more sexual undertones of the script and they also like rewrote a lot of um scenes in the script so i will say though that i think like even though Audrey Hepburn was known for these specific character traits and that she was casted in a lot of very similar roles, um, she wasn't so tied to an off-screen persona as Marilyn Monroe was. But in general, stars of the studio era were uh, pushed into these archetypes so that companies could capitalize on their previous successes. Like, if we think about it, imagining What's her name? that Nina a celebrity Lee. is like the same exact person as the character they play leads to these parasocial relationships because audiences think they know this person i'm really bad at subscribing to people see in the movie theater this is all to say that i don't think marilyn monroe should be undermined at all in terms of acting ability because she was basically like forced to play this character both on screen Mm. and off screen which takes a lot of talent that's kind of what we had that's kind of what we had with miley cyrus earlier but i guess Miley Cyrus only had Hannah Montana, while Marilyn Monroe just had this character, like just her characteristic. Hmm. In some, am I subscribed to Jack Manifold? That is a good question. I am. What can I say? I'm just a good friend. Uncle writes, contrary to the belief that this meant she couldn't act then, Monroe gave a performance so convincing in all realms of her public existence that her ability to maintain this type in her film roles was believed to be not a performance at all. In the latter half of her career, Marilyn actually tried to break away from this archetype. Uh, Famously, she moved to New York. She left Hollywood um, in protest against uh, Fox Studio because she believed, one, that she was not getting the roles she wanted to play, and two, because they were underpaying her in relation to how much money she was making them as a rising star. While in New York, she started training with Lee Strasberg at the actor's studio. What is it with Hollywood stars and Disney stars and all these big big people and being underpaid on a fucking hell even twitch streamers oh my god i'm gonna talk about this now because i'm fucking fed up with this female twitch streamers when it comes to sponsorships are treated like ass a lot of the times they're being underpaid like shit and i don't understand why because we have Dude, I have great interactions. Look at my tweets. They get great interactions. Why am I not getting paid as much as my male co-workers? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> it fucking sucks. And I'm so glad. Guys, I, 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 I just started working with, with, with this person. And she is amazing because she understands the struggle. And she is so helpful. And she is honestly such a sweet person and she knows the industry so she's like fighting for me and i appreciate that so much because as a as a freaking like twitch streamer you don't know you come into this industry and you get a sponsorship offering and you're like oh that sounds all right for me that sounds like an okay fee and then you talk to other people and they're like dude you should have gotten like three times the amount and you're like oh what (laughs) oh my god so i'm so glad that i finally have someone who's like yeah you should not you should have gotten the three times the amount and i'm gonna get you that because oh my god (laughs) thank you for the sub um uh gremda i appreciate it video once again strasberg is infamous for championing the method acting technique which is a whole can of worms that i don't really want to open in this video know your worth guys method acting with anything even if you're not a streamer, a, an actor, a musician, a, 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 someone, like, whatever. Know your worth. N- not just with money, but just with what you receive. Because it can so easily spiral into, oh, I can give this person this thing. And they'll be okay with it. And they'll be fine with it. No, don't be fine with that. Fucking hell. Know your worth. And if something's not... And if, if something's like, if, if something doesn't make you happy, then don't go for it. I feel like it's very dangerous and like 
kind of unhealthy because it's basically like pulling from your own traumatic experiences to create like authentic emotions and I don't know it just it just like doesn't seem that great <laughs> but with that said it was definitely a style that was growing credibility in mainstream society thanks to successful method actors like marlon brando and james dean uh, then you, in Kate december Blaise. 1955 she negotiated a new contract it. with her studio that gave her a better pay rate required her to make only four instead of 14 movies in the wow. next seven years as well as the ability to approve the directors of the films and to act in outside pictures including those for her own production company marilyn monroe productions Fourteen movies in se- excuse me, fourteen movies in say in seven years. That's two movies a year. That's crazy. At the kind of freedom she wanted in choosing the types of roles to play. So even though I think her acting is better in the latter half of her career, she was still <clears throat> forced into this like the girl archetype. In saying that, though, I do think that her performances, her new performances, were interesting because. They kind of offered this like meta commentary on how Marilyn was forced into these roles. So if that doesn't make any sense, but uh, let me try to clarify that for you. Laura Mulvey writes, if Monroe was going to continue to receive sex pot roles, she could nevertheless use her method training to imbue her performances with commentary on what it means to be viewed continually as a sex pot. For instance, in The Prince and the Showgirl, which was produced by Marilyn Monroe Productions, centers her character Elsie, who is like many of Marilyn's other characters, a showgirl. There's one scene that really stands out to me, though, which is when the regent is ignoring Elsie to make phone calls, and the camera focuses on Elsie, who's entertaining herself. Mm. Ah, Miss Marina, won't you have some champagne? Oh, I don't know you, Creme Ducal. You really think I ought? Well, maybe just a yeah, Elsie's private performance oh. here is essentially oh. her switching Hello. on this like Hello, sex pop kitty. persona. And when we watch the scene, we can see that the whole persona is something that Elsie and therefore Marilyn Monroe can turn off and on whenever she pleases. Misfits is another movie that really stands out from the Marilyn Monroe film canon, mainly because it is the only movie where the role was written in response to her plea for a new acting challenge. The screenplay was written by her then-husband, Arthur Miller. What oh, makes you so sad? I think you're the saddest girl I ever met. Marilyn's character in the film is Rosalind, who is currently in Reno to get a quick divorce. She decides to help these two cowboys she meets redecorate one of their homes. There's one scene where she's showing Guido, one of the cowboys, the work she's done for his place, and he opens a closet door that has a bunch of old pinup photos of the real Marilyn Monroe. She promptly closes the door, saying, oh, don't look at those, they're nothing. Guido insists on opening the door again, and she again keeps closing the door. When I watch this, I read this as Marilyn trying desperately to move on mm. from this persona she's become famous for, to leave it yeah, in the past true. as she pursues more serious acting roles. I also view that's it as really the real sad. experience of her new Again, photo- that's, that's like what we saw with Miley Cyrus earlier. It's like, but, but it's kind of like the opposite because Miley Cyrus then went rogue and did all these sexual things. Um, to get out of the Hannah Montana innocent little girl um, role, and then Marilyn Monroe. If Marilyn if Marilyn Monroe went rogue and did all these sexual things, people would be like, "I knew she would do that. She was destined to do that." Yeah, what can I say? You know, which is which is just really sad. It was being made centerfold in Playboy without her consent. I think this is probably Marilyn's best role in terms of highlighting her acting capabilities. The subtle facial expressions she does are extremely natural and show the profound sadness that undercuts her character's circumstances. Of course, these movies are not without criticism. Richard Dyer notes that Rosalind still has no biography and is reduced to a divorcee that still hinges on Marilyn's naive sexual persona. And she is still made the object of the male gaze on multiple occasions. Oh, and in The no, Prince and the Showgirl... There. That's also a thing. She was naive and sexual that's what she was described as she was the naive and sexual girl if she just went like full-on housewife uh, i don't know just innocent persona people people wouldn't have people wouldn't have had the same reaction as they had with miley doing like the opposite from what she did because Marilyn kind of had like the both worlds and I'm not saying the best of both worlds because it really wasn't. It was probably the worst of both worlds. And that's really sad. 
because she definitely didn't she definitely wanted to break free you know one of the first sequences is Marilyn's <laughs> boob falling out of her dress so even though there is this underlying meta commentary they wouldn't let her be an intellectual or powerful on displaying person Marilyn's yeah because women stupid they wouldn't let her be an intellectual and powerful person they wouldn't let her be a powerful woman that she is and a and an icon and an and a You're here stuck around after the raid? Yeah, you you said that now. You said that now, Jack Waterfold. You said that now. You are a liar. <laughs> You're late. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't I forgot what I was saying. Jack you and having her perform adjacent roles to a character she's already known for. Been here the whole time, heard what you said, rude. Why didn't you say anything about the start then, Jack? When I actually called you out. Photographer Richard Avedon, who worked with Marilyn in real life, once said of her, there was no such person as Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe was an invention of hers, a genius invention that she created like an oh author God, creates a Jack. character. There's actually quite a lot of testimonials noting the difference between like the real Marilyn and the Marilyn that was viewed by the public. Another photographer, <laughs> Philippe Halsman, wrote in Life magazine in 1952 about his experience with Marilyn. I found Marilyn anything but stupid, with amazing frankness and a good sense of humor and her company stimulating even in a spiritual way. The trait which struck me most was a general benevolence, an absolute absence of envy and jealousy, which in an actress was astonishing. These inconsistencies wow. between Persona Marilyn and Real Marilyn came even more into light after her death. But unfortunately, when it comes to anyone who dies under uncertain circumstances, whose real life was rendered unknowable by the majority of us, and who was no longer around to verify or deny any testimonials that came out after their death, it is no surprise that her subsequent biographies have relied on a high degree of fictionalization and speculation. Mm -hmm. For instance, Marilyn did have a drug abuse problem, but there's conflict over how she obtain the drugs in the first place in Norma Jean in Maryland she gets them from Ted Lewis in Blonde one of her lovers Cass introduces her to pills in The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe Johnny Hyde gives her drugs to calm her down on the set of All About Eve one of these fictionalizations or I think what I heard are... was the, late, the latest one that's how I heard she got them um but yeah I wouldn't really know. like disrespectful no to me because Marilyn was a real person and I feel like they just like botch her legacy but I understand why they do it like I think it's wrong but I understand why filmmakers and writers feel like they have to fill in these blanks because there is just so much modern interest in who she is and who, or who she was and people just want answers to questions and once again a lot of the interest that is garnered for her is because her image is literally plastered everywhere Stephen Cohen analyzes several Marilyn biopics in his article and notes the gossip about her affairs, abortions, and possible or impossible assassination reinforces her immortality too, because their truthfulness is always disputable and debatable, giving her life story its sense of ongoing currency. There yeah, are definitely parts there is of her story no, that are true. There is no end to it. Because you there's no like what is it called? Like outcome to it? Because she's dead. And most people who knew her very closely are dead. So there is no, there is no outcome. No one knows, and 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 it's never going to be the end. So that yeah, True, so that's why everyone tragic. is really like interested the fact in it that because her mother did you can just make up your own mind about it. It's a, it, it's basically you can just project your own thoughts onto it, and humans love that. Humans love taking one thing. And just projecting their own thoughts and feelings and i'm not i'm not like i'm not i'm not slandering humans and saying that's awful it's just what we do we take something and we project our own thoughts and feelings onto it and marilyn monroe is such a big thing of like she was this person and she got assassinated and or or she killed herself she overdosed like all these things um <clears throat> so yeah it's it's it makes sense that we have such an interest in her i have such an interest in her you know like i said i think she's so interesting and so like such a such an amazing person um so yeah take care of her which uh put marilyn in numerous foster homes the fact that marilyn had three unsuccessful marriages the fact that she had trouble conceiving and had endometriosis mm, she really the fact wanted that to be she mother. had mental illnesses the fact that she was basically bullied and exploited by the hollywood machine and the fact that she died early at the age of 36 
Conkle also notes that Marilyn's persona reflects the story of a woman who was the damaged famous. The damage of fame includes mental health problems, addictions, and bankruptcy, which evidently draws people closer to the injured celebrity. Thus, Marilyn's series of struggles endeared others to her. People love to see themselves represented in celebrity narratives because I feel like people like to have someone to fixate their issues around. Like they want someone to start the conversation for them when it comes to things that they're internally dealing with. During and that's why we got to start a conversation, chat. That's what I've always stood for. Starting the conversation. Yes, I love that she said that. Because, yes, people are like, oh, yeah, this is an issue and I don't like that. And, and they never do anything for that. And I think if we all just started conversations more where we should start conversations instead of just dead like like just just go dead silent over it because uh, i like bringing this issue up because i think that's like a very um like just a very relevant point um for this discussion um nsfw reddits of streamers mainly female streamers um which is a lot of people photoshopping stuff a lot of people just posting stuff without consent um and that's what it is it's consent um and i think we we haven't started a conversation or we haven't talked about it enough where we realize this is an actual problem because everyone knows it's wrong everyone's like this is not good we shouldn't do that you know it's non-consensual and consent is important we all know consent is important we all get taught consent is important but a lot of people don't act on it a, peop a lot of people might think those are the right thoughts but they, they but they don't agree with that they they will go against that um and i think one thing that i've heard uh in the past is when i started to talk about that i heard oh yeah but it's not going to change we can't we can't police the internet um where where i think yes we can if we started to talk about this and raise this as an actual issue we can change it and it, it happens with 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 a lot of other things too like the wage gap <laughs> that's still a thing <laughs> wage gap internalized misogyny outward misogyny obviously i will i will raise these issues because i'm interested in those and i have been interested in those for years and i have and i have knowledge of that there's so many other things racism um just just unfair treatment of 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 everyone and, and and everything i think um and yeah so i i love people who start conversations i love people who talk about these things obviously it's not a thing of just constantly complaining that this is wrong and 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 putting it in the areas that they're not supposed to be it's more about giving us a space to talk about that's what we need we need a space to talk about it you know because because if because we we've seen this we've, we've seen this before and we've and it's it's a, it's an ongoing thing where people are going to say whenever there's an issue raised um like i tweeted as an example i tweeted hey big companies and corporations treat women with respect and don't just say you do a challenge or something like that um and i've gotten a lot of a lot of people being mad at me and being like oh women just want to make them want to make a problem out of everything and they just want to make it about themselves and it's like no i actually don't think that i think maybe you see that because you have seen these t t takes in the wrong areas and you're like okay this is this, is, this doesn't have anything to do with it and then you internalize that and you're like oh they just they just put that everywhere they just plaster they just plaster their equalism and is it is that a, is that a word they just plaster it everywhere and they just make it about themselves and 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 they hate men and and they just want they just want to be something better which is not true and it has never been true we don't think we're better than men and and, and we don't we don't want to be treated better than men we want to be treated equal and we've always wanted to be treated equal um and that's why i think we need spaces to raise these issues and not confined spaces where we we build a wall around Too each other log. and and don't let anyone in but spaces where 
everyone is welcome to listen in and everyone is welcome to give their opinion and everyone is welcome to have their opinion listened to um i think that is very very important and this is gone this is not an ad and this is not advertising it but i am starting a podcast about exactly that issue and about exactly that thing because i am very um very passionate about that so hi james thank you for the raid i appreciate it hello everyone we're talking about feminism no not just feminism we're just talking about starting conversations where conversations need to be started we're also watching um a video about marilyn monroe right now i hope you had a good stream um <clears throat> i just went on a small uh, rant like i always do <laughs> thank you grace for the sub i appreciate OMG, it omg eight months <gasps> thank you for the eight months i appreciate it hi i hope you had fun i hope you had fun with in, in james's stream um oh yeah i don't know i think that was everything i wanted to say let's go back to the video <laughs> to have a baby was a frequent conversation among fan magazines uh one photo play article imagined marilyn saying which i feel like is just totally inappropriate but anyways uh the article said someday when i grow up i'm going to have a little girl of my own and i'm never going to leave her never never marilyn was oh, essentially a vehicle so for these women to talk about their issues when it came to like reproductive health and uh childbearing as of very recently, we've seen Kim Kardashian donning two of Marilyn's oh, yeah. actual dresses. We've seen numerous depictions of Marilyn Monroe in pop culture, whether that be a recreation of her gentleman prefer blonde sequence or a recreation of her photo shoots. Earlier this year, another Marilyn Monroe documentary came out attempting to reframe her narrative as empowering to reflect her cultural tendency to girl bossify everyone and everything. Marilyn's Girl relevance bossified. seems to be ever consistent. I like that word. To see a woman that is so in charge of her sexuality is extremely empowering. This woman is so comfortable in her skin. She was rolling the dice with her career in very real terms. Generally, I think all of this reframing That's so to make Marilyn interesting. Like because that's what we not what we've not that's we've not been hearing that we've been hearing the opposite she wanted to break out of that thank you ariana for the prime i appreciate it she wanted to break out of that and she wanted to obviously like yeah she she was fine with it like when she when she did the interview and they were like oh did you wear anything during your new shoot and she, uh, or did you have anything on and she said i had the radio on yeah she owned it but i don't think it was the thing of like yeah i'm gonna do this with my life i think it was more of a thing like that's just who people saw her as and that's what she did because she was a smart woman and she made her money and she you know was this like raised individual like the the representation of a movement <laughs> to push an agenda is a Buxy. disservice and disrespectful to who she was which is a woman in the 1950s dealing with problems of the 1950s yeah but at the same time, I think projecting onto Marilyn on a personal level is gifted. okay. I because that's just like guys. what celebrities are. They're figureheads for people to project onto and to help make sense of their own lives. What I said earlier. It's just about learning how to navigate. What I said earlier, but she said it being better. Disrespectful <laughs> or like tarnishing the legacy of a real human being. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the end of the video. Um, please let me know in the comments. That was a really good Marilyn video. Monroe, I liked it. Uh, and <laughs> what you think about recent events concerning Marilyn Monroe. I don't know when I'll do another old Hollywood themed video, but I would love to hear any suggestions for any other uh, figureheads or old Hollywood esque uh, videos you would like to see from me. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Mina. Wow. Good message. Agreed. Good message. Um, all right. What should we watch next? Um, let me look at my watch later. Uh, so we can, we can see if there's anything interesting in there. If you want, if you like are interested in anything, obviously sub goal. <gasps> we reached we reach a sub goal. Thank you guys. Thanks for reaching the sub goal. I appreciate it. Thank you. The Alpha Sigma Male podcast? No, no, no. I'm doing I'm doing a dedicated stream for that. I am going to start researching. Oh, I'm gonna to listen to so much crap. Oh my god. I'm gonna to have to listen to so much crap. Because I'm gonna start researching and I'm just gonna like show you the most ridiculous takes. But 
Ugh. Having to... Oh, I'm gonna have to sit through that chat. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, let's see if I have anything interesting. We, we will be with you, true. I'm going to show you the most ridiculous things. Um, Skeppy's video on Sunny. I haven't watched Sunny's video on Skeppy. And I feel like... I feel like that's a really diff like that's a really like slippery slide because the reason I haven't been involving myself in that is because obviously I know Skeppy, so I don't really want to like just plaster my opinion out there if I have one uh because I think that's like a because that's like too close, you know, I feel like that's too close to home um so yeah, I don't really I don't really want to do that. <clears throat> um the game theory on loss is too recent i don't like watching too recent videos because i don't want to i guess take away from the views obviously like my four thousand viewers here you know you guys it's not the biggest thing well it's still it is a big thing no it is a big thing especially for a twist stream i appreciate everyone for being here i'm not saying you're insignificant i really appreciate it but obviously like in the grand scheme of game theory getting millions of views that's like not that much and it's a really small percentage but i still don't want to take away from those views because if you have seen that video in your recommended in a few days and you're like oh i want to watch that later um and then you watch it on my channel you're not going to go over to watch that video and i don't want to do that um so yeah that's the thing um Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. If I have anything in my recommended that's interesting. I watched a video on PETA the other day. Um, obviously, I'm not going to watch it again because I've already seen it. I like to give like my like initial reaction to something. I don't like being like, oh, yeah, I've seen this and this is how it is and everything. Um, so I'm not going to watch it again. But that one was interesting. It was like a video of like about like just what PETA does and, and, and like how they contradict themselves um, so that was very interesting <clears throat> um, Nexpo ooh, I haven't watched a Nexpo video in ages is Nexpo, Nexpo so, ooh yeah okay what's an interesting Nexpo video let me see My mouse stopped working. <clears throat> um, I'm going to show you if there's like anything interesting. I do think I, I started watching this local 58, but it's it's almost an hour. So I don't think I want to watch an hour long video. Chat chat. I love chat chat. Chat chat is so cool and funny and just great. Yes, I love chat chat. Hell yeah. Sh should we see what Chat Chat is up to? Chat, if you don't know Chat Chat, oh my god, you are missing. You are missing culture. Quality. You're missing quality, honestly. <clears throat> mm. Ooh. Five months ago, girl facts. 
Hey guys, yes. and welcome oh. back. Thank you, Maddie. Let's watch Chat Chat Girl Facts. <clears throat> Hey guys, and welcome back to My name is Chad Chad, really. and today we're going to be learning some girl facts, some facts about girls, uh. some things that are exclusive to only girls. I'm so interested. Facts. I want to what know girl girls? facts. Some of you might not be familiar. Girls I, I are need to know girl facts. Complicated. Sometimes they'll say really cryptic things like, I wish you would pay more attention to me, or I'm hungry. Dude, so true. Why would she say that? Why would she say that? That doesn't make any sense. My brain does not... It, it, wh what does that even mean? Like, okay. she's hungry? What is that? She's I wish they would just tell us what they want sometimes, you know? No need to be so mysterious, girls. So I did some research. Where else? other than TikTok. I girl love the hashtag facts. girl facts on TikTok oh, girl because facts. it's so obvious that a lot of the people who post them have never Just stop being hungry. Them. You are so right. Why 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 would she say that? Just stop. Just stop being hungry. Oh my god. Air as a girl. Most of them seem like they came from Google or more specifically Just from those eat. weird WikiHow articles. Except instead of telling you how to pretend to be a vampire at school, mm. they're telling you what a girl really means when she texts you the letter K. And everyone knows oh. if you want to know something about girls, don't ask girls. Ask dudes on TikTok who copy pasted baseless studies from the internet and then stood in front of their iPhone camera like this. So true. But before we no, 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 and they also need to make the, the, the face, the handsome face. Yeah, yeah. And, and be shirtless. That's a really important fact. If you want to know anything about girls and want to relay that fact to the internet, you got to be shirtless. Because why, why, what else is going to show that you have credibility if you are not shirtless? ourselves on the totally <coughs> inexplicable nature of girls. This video is sponsored by Casetify. Casetify provides a huge selection of phone cases with adorable, customizable designs like this one. Casetify's new impact and ultra impact cases are made with 65% recycled and plant-based materials, plus are shipped in 100% recycled packaging along with eco-friendly ink. They are also compatible with wireless charging and 5G. I drop my phone at least three times a day so I can personally vouch for Casetify's top-notch drop protection. Their Chitek 2.0 technology is drop tested and proven to protect your phone from drops of up to 9.8 feet. There are endless options when it comes to <laughs> Did you use ChatChat's chat code if not shame on you? So print, true. Or you can even add your name or monogram for a truly one of a kind custom choice. These are also 100 non-toxic and non-hazardous. A feature I really appreciate, especially right now, is the antimicrobial <laughs> coating that kills 99% of bacteria and keeps Casetify cases germ-free. If you want to check out Casetify, just go to Casetify dot com slash chad or click the link in my description to get 15 percent off of your order thank you to case defy for sponsoring today and let's get back to the video okay first girl fact is actually a two-in-oneer it's boys Ooh. and girl oh, facts. girls wow. fall in love with what they hear boys fall in love with what they see that's why girls wear makeup and boys lie wow i'm 2012 and this is fake. <laughs> one of these oh is my not like god so, this so true actually girls are under a lot of pressure to be pretty and to wear makeup in order to be considered attractive based off of often unattainable beauty and boys lie to appease the male gaze and boys are f***ing liars. It's not their fault though, it's a fact. They can't help it. Yeah, so then I lied to her, obviously, mm -hmm. and I told her I was out with the boys, but really I was cheating on her with her sister, right. and she still doesn't know to this day, and we have two kids together, but it, like, it's literally not right, my it's fault. Not, it's like, it's in his DNA. Lying, right? It's a boy fact. Sometimes I wear eyeliner. We are experiencing the same thing. When a boy is truly in love, he will act like a child. Mm. But... When a girl is truly in love, she will act like a mother. I'm that's a bit weird. That's a that's mmm. Mm. Okay. Who would really like to speak with you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So not specific. So she falls in love with you and she <clears throat> like sets up your doctor appointments or brings you fruit gummies to your soccer game. He falls in love with you and just starts 
uncontrollably eating the food pissed coming. Me. <laughs> Once again, it kind of seems like girls are getting the worst end of the bargain. Girls are more attractive to guys who have the ability to make him laugh. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's the whole. <laughs> Wait. Wait. <laughs> That's just, that's just, that's just, that's just wrong. Yeah, guys, um, he killed my whole family and also my dog, but he made me laugh. So I just have to marry him now. Full fact. Man, I wonder how many studies they had to conduct to figure out that girls are more attracted to people who have a similar sense of humor to them. Hashtag psychology. <laughs> True. Hashtag facts. This applies to literally everyone. Yeah, so when someone makes you laugh, it makes you feel good inside. Okay. So you like them. Uh -huh. But if someone doesn't make you laugh, uh -huh. then it doesn't make you feel good. Okay. So you doesn't like them. Probably. Whoa, dude. I know. That's it's, like psychology. It's, it's like psychology. It's psychology. It's psychology. And why are Honestly. we in the ocean? Why are we underwater for this? I just can't believe I it, know. dude. Guys, I know. you could write a book, I really, dude. Really oh my god, that would be I could write a book. What would you call it? The guys, fact, I'm like, actively Lord drowning. Friends of food, not fish. Girls normally fall in love with older boys. Girls hate it when boys always talk about themselves. What is it with what is it with like, these like stock image videos of just some like landscape or underwater? Like But girls like it when boys pay attention to them and tell them how important they are. Yes. These are just basic rules for interacting with anyone ever. <laughs> no one really wants to hang out with someone who only talks about themselves because it means that they probably don't care about what's going on with you as much. And yes, girls usually like when people tell them they're important and pay attention to them because they are human beings. This video has half a million likes, which yeah. means that half a million people watched this and thought, this Why aren't they shirtless? That's what I'm asking. Where are the shirtless guys telling me girls fa girl facts? I came here, chat chat, I came here to see shirtless men because I want to know my girl facts. Where are they? <clears throat> this taught me something that I didn't know before. I just had never considered having basic human decency before. But now I will. Only 4% of women. I will tell my girlfriend that she is important to me now. It's beautiful. If a girl goes silent during a conversation, she is probably overthinking what you just said. You cannot just pull statistics out of your ass, plop them onto a picture of a sunset, and <laughs> label it fuck? a psychological fact. Where did 4% come from? Was there a... No, I like the... I like the... If she goes silent during the conversation, she probably is overthinking what you said. No, she probably just doesn't know how to respond to it. Or, I don't know, it's probably just thinking over oh, I, I, for an answer. Or... The conversation was over. No, guys. No. The second she goes quiet, the second she goes quiet, he won. She's overthinking it. She's overthinking it. Troll group? Was there a placebo? Or here? Yeah, maybe she's just group? listening I don't to know you. About scientific studies. Was there a hippopotamus? <laughs> Girls easily get carried away by their emotions. This is true. My emotions have been bulking. 70% of girls use silence to express pain. Oh. Again, with the statistics, this is literally impossible to be fact. It is a subjective reaction to being uh. sad. You cannot just make sweeping generalizations with no study and no research. There have to be actual science. Yeah, that TikTok like just said basically pills. women are emotional. Fact. If a girl goes silent during a conversation, it means she's probably overthinking what you just said. A lot of guys tend to get annoyed at this, when in reality it's easily fixable. They just need reassurance, or for you to explain something again, so they don't feel the need to overthink it. Unpopular fact is not a thing. A fact cannot be unpopular, because it's a fact. I will define <laughs> fact right True, now. actually. Truth about events, as opposed to interpretation. This is an interpretation it's the same thing over of and over again. is going on in a girl's head whenever Yeah, it's just, it's just re, like, recycling the same information. You, Cody, then maybe you should not be wondering why she keeps 
stops overthinking and consider that maybe you just keep saying stupid shit. This is just a word for word copy of the other one that we saw. What BuzzFeed article are you guys stealing this from? Unpopular fact, plagiarism is not cool. You wouldn't plagiarize a car. You wouldn't plagiarize a handbag. Downloading a plagiarism <laughs> is How stealing. do you plagiarize a car? Don't tear doesn't mean her heart doesn't cry. Those are called emotions. Like if I were to say that your TikTok- <laughs> Wait, like oh my God. That reminds me of like, oh, I've, I saw, I saw it, like I saw a few tweets the other day of like screenshots of people just pointing out like basic human, like just things. And they were like, Oh my god, it's so cute when this person is doing that. Like, oh my god, it's so cute when this person is breathing. Or like, oh my god, this person is giving the other person eye contact while they're talking to each other. That is so adorable. Like, just stuff like that. And I thought that was so funny. <laughs> In her monologue of a three-year-old child, that would probably <clears throat> make your heart cry, but that's just called having feelings. Oh. I like that the people posting these kinds of videos apparently know so little about girls that they have to steal every girl fact from each other. I've seen this one yeah, at exactly. least five times. Maybe we're yeah. not overthinking all the time. Maybe we're trying to like remember the lyrics to a song or you have something stuck in your mm. teeth. And another girl fact is that they have to trim their fingernails every 30 seconds or they will fall off and grow legs. Then they can actually reproduce and that's how the thumb people from the third Spy Kids movie were made, but you probably didn't my head. know that. My head? <laughs> Why do I always say I hit my head? That happened the other day too when I hit my knee. I just say I hit my head. I didn't. I hit my foot. We cannot process the incredible graphic <laughs> from the Spy Kids franchise. The true meaning is when the girl texts. Mm -hmm. She's mad. I'm fine. She's not fine. It's fine. It's not fine. Hey. Hey. How are you? I'm fine. She's not fine. She's not fine, guys. I don't care. She really cares. I'll, it's okay. I'll be okay. She's hurting a lot. Oh, okay. Her heart just shattered. Okay. Everything is good. Okay. Something might be wrong. Okay. Something is really wrong. Don't try to guess a girl's <laughs> feelings. Always ask her. So I'm kind of starting to get mixed signals. You said if a girl says she's fine, then she's not fine. And just to go with the opposite of whatever she says. But now you're saying that we should just ask her and never assume. So your girl fact mm. is just to ask a girl. But we came to you for girl facts. We came for your expertise. We're not going to learn about girls. Where are the shirtless men? anywhere else girls want nothing more than to feel loved i mean i can think of a couple things we might also want basic respect safety <laughs> safety is nice do you want popcorn mm. oh no she's mad <laughs> yeah okay that might be cool if when you're actually time, okay at you mouth, True. kiss her that is a hundred percent not what you should do it's just based on some of the previous girl facts we've seen it doesn't seem like y'all are the best at picking up on signals so maybe don't kiss girls just because they happen to glance at your mouth area if she starts cussing out a storm at you and tries to be all big and bad with you kiss her and tell her that you love her got it okay so if a girl is visibly upset with you don't admit fault just kiss her because all girls want is love Aww. Aww. when she's quiet ask her what's wrong oh that's sweet uh yeah she pulls away pull her back is this girl language or serial killer language? oh my because god Definitely sounds like something a serial killer would do, which checks out since you're driving us around in a car. Imagine, imagine you're in class, right? I haven't been in class and I just thought, you know, I might not be good at You're in class, girl next to you. She like, I don't know, wants to ask you the date, but the teacher is talking right now. So she can't like just be like, hey, what's the date today? So she looks at you. Hoping that you look back at her, being like, I want to initiate a conversation. She, so she looks at you, you stare, you don't look, you, you look her in the eyes, you don't look away. Don't look away until she does. Don't look away. That's how you get her. That's how you get the girl. 100%. If, 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 if someone was sitting, if, if the boy who was sitting next to me would do that, I'd be married right now. That's all, that's, that's how I, you know, that's how I know he's into me. If he doesn't, if he, if he looks away before I look away, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to work out.
because like i need that I, I need someone to be dedicated to to me car at night on an empty road to bury us no doubt do not take any of this advice if you were to see any of these happening in real life without weirdly motivational music in the background it would be terrifying hey are you okay yeah i'm fine you just got really quiet yeah yes i if did you're overthinking something i said i do not care about anything you've said ever it's gonna be okay okay i'm here to protect you okay i'm just trying to diffuse this Okay. And if I make one wrong move, the whole world will literally oh, end. No. So I could okay. really use some silence right now, okay? Okay. Seventy-eight percent of girls use silence to express pain. Oh, for <laughs> sake! <laughs> oh my god. To conclude this video, obviously, do not listen to any of the things in these TikToks. But I'm gonna call it there, guys. I'm sorry if this video was shorter than usual. I'm still trying to get back into the swing of things. But if I like her plants here, in the background. They're amazing. So chat chat. Watching. I appreciate you clicking on. Hey, my I video approve. Out of all the videos that are on here, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Nice. That was amazing. That was really fun. I like that a lot. Um, but I have to do some things before I'm flying to America tomorrow and I'm flying really early tomorrow. Um, so I really need to, I really need to go and get these things done before it's too late. Um, so I really appreciate you being here. Um, I really do. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it wasn't like, I don't actually know. I really enjoyed the stream. You know what? I feel a lot better. I'm actually feeling a I lot really better. I really enjoyed the stream. I yeah. hope we made your day better by being here and watching these videos with you. Hell yeah. Anyways, I hope you have a good rest of your day. If you also enjoyed the stream. Have fun at VidCon this week. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed the stream, I'm so happy to do these streams more often because I love watching, um, just uh what video essays and i love um i do it i do it all the time so you know i'm happy to, to to watch it with you guys and give you my input and um react to it with you because it was really fun and i like that we had conversations it's nice to have conversations it's good to have conversations so yeah i enjoyed that um however i'm going to go ahead and raid someone <coughs> who's live who is live right now? Oosh. Actually, yeah. Foosh. Let's go ahead and raid Foosh. Foosh, Foosh Gamers is live. He's playing Minecraft parkour practice right now. Do you think there were guys watching that and taking notes, not realizing that it wasn't serious? Oh anyway, no! Have a good time at VidCon. I hope not. Safe travels. Don't take anything, me. anything I say ever serious, please, guys. I'm just, I'm just stupid streamer sitting in her room and talking. You know, that's me. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be at VidCon. Um, but I'm not an invited creator, so I will not have a meet and greet. But I'm gonna try and just walk around and see people. So if you see me, say hello. I don't bite. I'm going to be happy to say hello. I'm going to ha be happy to take pictures. Uh, I'm going to vlog it. Uh, and also, I I'm currently edit editing my Florida vlog. So Florida vlog is coming out too. Um, so yeah, I, I, yes, please go say hello if you are there um, <clears throat> or if you're just around. And uh, give foolish my love, guys. I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you're all having a wonderful morning, evening, or day, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for making my day better. I feel a lot better. Um, and I had a lot of fun this stream. It was a good stream. 